I went to Haiti, bro, and I seen like the compound that her cousin had, which had multiple huts, multiple demonic churches. And I remember him saying, come on, you know, come to this hut. I mean, there was human skulls, bro. In the hut, they were digging up, you know, skeletons. Yeah. And I'm watching this, bro, and he puts on this outfit. And then he has to do a ritual. So he has to start dancing, yeah. putting on music and singing actual mm -hmm. demonic worship. The demon actually possessed him. Like I yeah. saw him going from like regular, like doing the little drum ritual, like dancing. And all of a sudden, like, yeah. like, like that. And then like whole face changed, eyes looked at me, bro. He would be gone. When he woke up, he would be like, I don't know what happened. The demon would be like eating food, like because the demon has a vessel now to actually enjoy the lustful desires. Mm -hmm. So be eating like, yeah. like, bro, like a pig, bro. Wow. Like it's, 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 it's crazy. What is is up guys i am here right now with richard lorenzo pastor rich the yes, man sir. the myth the legend <laughs> man i'm excited for this podcast i've been looking forward to it Amen. we've been planning this one like i said guys i'm going to be doing the podcast once in a while when an anointed man of god comes in the area and that just so happened to be the case so thank you man Amen. for coming on i appreciate it's it it's an honor bro it's an honor to be on here man just to uh to spread the light of god man i love you a lot you Amen. know we're close i'm um, off camera mm -hmm. And just to come on here to edify the body of Christ. And like I've said, your channel is going to take off. Amen. For I'll the glory that. of God. And um, I know that, that this being one of the first interviews is going to really help a lot of people, you know, yeah. come out of the stuff that I was in. So. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Praise God. I wanted to uh, make this quick little speech. Guys, if you're watching this right now, majority of the people who watch the videos, I checked the analytics, majority of the watchers are not subscribed. So, Give us a subscription. Give me a subscription. I don't know why I said us. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. Do it on behalf of Pastor Rich Come as on. well. Subscribe to the channel, guys. If you are a viewer and you are not subscribed yet, it really helps a lot. Give this video a like. Turn on the post notifications. This podcast is going to be a banger. I actually got Come some on. questions. Um, Let's get it. Already drafted up. So the first one I wanted to ask, bro, is uh, – can you share your upbringing, where you're from, and yes. if you were raised a Christian? Yeah, no problem. Um, so I'm from Broward County. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't know, it's um about 30 minutes north of Miami. Um, you guys know where Kodak Black and you know Rick uh, Rick Ross, Ace Hood, all these people are mm -hmm. from. It's a pretty um slummy area. Yeah, um, a lot of people from the Caribbean, a lot of witchcraft out there. I didn't know that in the world though, because I wasn't raised Holy Ghost filled Christian. Mm -hmm. I was actually raised. Catholic, mm -hmm. not really pri like not not believing in it, but doing it because my mother forced me to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Puerto Rican descent, so my mother um, was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. My dad was actually raised Christian, like real deal, like real Holy Spirit filled Christian. But he didn't. Um, he fell away. You mm -hmm. know, he was all up in the world and didn't really press it on my brother and I because he was raised around my grandmother, who he thought at the time was very legalistic and controlling. Mm -hmm. But really, she was just raising her children in the faith. Yeah. So I was raised in the Catholic Church, man, just um, go, having to go on, you know, CCD, it's called, on Wednesdays, go on Sunday, falling asleep in the pews, <laughs> you know, like being a ruckus in, 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 um, in, you know, in class, trying to mess with girls. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they celebrated Halloween. They, right, right, right. You know, it was just real, like, they don't teach you anything about Jesus. Yeah. I remember when I was younger, asking about the Trinity, like, mm -hmm. what does that mean, Father, Son, Holy Spirit? And the, the teacher couldn't teach me, and she just told me, you know what? Don't worry about it. Don't. What? Yeah, the teacher, the teacher was just like, stop asking that question. We need to continue. No way. So it was a lot of arts and crafts, a lot of um, f like you know, coloring stuff, and this is it's, it's just it was an after school program. Mm -hmm. You know, no one really like paid attention or really was like really seeking God. So mm -hmm. I I would say like you know just being there and seeing Jesus, Jesus on the cross. You know, like I always had an interest in Jesus, but I thought like my entire life like that's what Christianity is. Yeah. I want like when I turned 18 and I left my home, I was like, I want no parts of it. You know, you know, later in my teens in high school from like about sophomore year um, is when everything just took, went to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. You know, raised in um, in Broward. I was raised around around friends who were very um, oppressed, man, like a lot of um, just murder. Yeah. Drug dealings, a lot of sex, a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of fornication. Yeah. And um, I always maintained a dual life. So I had friends that were very smart. Mm -hmm. Um, and friends that were very hood. Mm -hmm. I, I played basketball, so yeah. I was around that that basketball crowd. But I had a lot of friends that um, that were just very smart because my mom was always like, "Make sure you go to college." I always thought like that's my golden ticket. So yeah. by any means necessary, I made sure I got good grades. I mean, I would cheat on tests. Professional cheater, bro. Like mm -hmm. not your average cheater. If you're watching yeah. and you know me from middle school and high school, you already know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Bro, I would figure out ways. Yeah. Um, and just make sure I got good grades. Never studied. Always cheated. I mean, I was a smart dude. 
you know, I would cram sometimes. I got a pretty high school on my SATs, my SATs. So I maintained a double life. You know, I'm over there taking the SATs and then, you know, at the end of the, you know, at the end, when I get out the, the classroom, I'm going to rob a house, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, if I can maintain both lives, you mm-hmm. know, some, one of them is going to hit. I want the sex. I want the girls. I want the money. I want the popularity. Yeah. Because I was so rejected. Mm-hmm. But I also, um, I also want to make sure I have like this ticket just in case to go to college so yeah. I can be, I wanted money. Right. My my thing was always like, Mom, I'm gonna get us. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get you a house. I'm gonna get you a car. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna be the one that makes millions to help the family out. Mm-hmm. So that was always my brother and I's motivation. Yeah. So we we were, we were raised very um, in a, a household of love. Like my mom, my dad, they love us. Um, but without Jesus, yeah. so it was like the love that they thought they needed to be. So yeah. my dad not having a father was very hard on me. Mm-hmm. Very strict. He never he never had a father. Mm-hmm. So just a lot of, you know, Puerto Ricans, if you know what I'm talking about, a lot of butt whoopings. Yeah. I mean, regularly, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like and you know, with the belt and the, yeah. uh, a lot of butt whoopings. I was a bad kid. I'm not going to even yeah, sit yeah, here in yeah, front. Yeah. Like, I was a bad kid. Yeah. And my, um, just, and my dad, you know, I love him. He's saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I honor him so much. But my dad, you know, being raised, you know, he, did, you know, he, he smoked, he drank, mm-hmm. he did certain things that, as a kid, it, it shocked me, you know, because, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, in schools, they tell you stay away from, you know, drugs. And yeah, if you yeah, do, yeah, this yeah. could happen. And they show you those crazy videos yeah. of people dying. So I would see my dad doing these things and just be like super rejected. You yeah. know, my mom and my dad would argue a lot because Je- Jesus was not in the center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of division in the home, a lot of mm-hmm. separation coming back, separation coming. Yeah. So I, me and my brother were very, um, like, you know, we were, we were rejected growing up. Yeah. And my parents know that, and they, my dad actually, like I said, he got fit, sit, filled with the spirit. My mom got saved. I saw that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they actually, my dad actually repented to me a few, uh, a few months ago, bro. Wow. Te- sent me a text and was just like, "I'm sorry for everything," and I was just oh. like, "It meant so much, Dude, much to me, amazing. man." You know what I'm saying? So yeah. my dad is on fire now, but you know, I was raised in that lifestyle, man. You know, 16, 17, you know, running up in houses, you know, sticking up stores, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, drug dealing, drug, selling drugs, woman sex all the time. You know, where I'm from, if you had a girlfriend, you were a sucker. Yeah. So it was, it was really how many girls can you have? Yeah. You know, being a player, a pimp was actually like glorified. Yeah. If you weren't like, you know, the, the, the Jamaican and Haitian culture. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, I was the only Puerto Rican kid on my basketball team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was, I was raised around a lot of um, Caribbean people. Mm-hmm. So man, I just I was I grew up in that lifestyle, you know, a lot of um um just just fornication, witchcraft, all that stuff, and um I left at eighteen, I left and I went to Orlando. I actually got a scholarship to UCF. Okay. So I was the only friend that made it out. You know, they were always like, "Yo, you're the guy, you're the one, you made yeah, it you're out." Yeah, you gonna take like, us out the hood, bro? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Li- literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. um, you know, I came to UCF in Central Florida, brought that culture. I was like, man, I'm gonna take over. You know, all these goody two shoe kids. I'm gonna start trapping, selling drugs, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna get all the girls. And that's what me and my friend, actually a Haitian friend, I had that came straight from Haiti. Yeah, that's what we did, man. We um, we uh, we were, I mean, drinking and driving was a regular thing. Mm-hmm. Partying was a regular thing. I was moving a lot of mid grade weed. If you guys mm-hmm. know what mid is, um, it was big back then. That was when Arizona. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but. I don't want to teach on it, but yeah, yeah. that specific strand was really big, and you couldn't tell the difference between Reggie and, and, and high grade, which yeah, was called yeah, Crip yeah. at yeah. the time. So I was moving a lot of Zona. I was, um, man, it was just it was I was making money at eighteen. Yeah. I had all these girls, bro. It was it was demonic, mm-hmm. and I brought that culture to Orlando. I mean, my first semester, I got a, I got straight C's, barely made it two point Wow, that's when I got introduced to Adderall. And, um, oh, yeah. You know, I, I was diagnosed with ADHD in first yeah, grade. Same. <laughs> in first grade, and I remember, I remember being on that, you know, the the the, psych, the the psychiatrist chair, you know, like you know, the therapist chair, and them saying, you know, you have ADHD, and my mom actually saying, I'm not going to give him drugs. Thank God. Shout out to my mom. She just she believed in like the natural way, like what, listening to these tapes. I would have to listen to these cassette tapes, literally, and squeeze a ball. Like every yeah. time I'd, I, I she'd be like, you have to, you have to go sit down and do this. But bro, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't really work. You know, yeah. really, I was just an evangelist at heart. I didn't know it. And um, but yeah, man, I needed, I needed Jesus. So when I got to college, I was introduced to Adderall, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Yo, like this stuff is is gonna help you pass tests." Yeah, bro, I started taking Adderall. You know, and I started seeing like how I can get so much more done. Mm-hmm. In a short period of time. Right. So I'm taking Adderall daily at this point. Like I got it prescribed and everything. I went to the the um the doctor and just lied. Yeah. You know, and in Florida they give it to you like it's candy, bro. Like mm-hmm. they don't really ask questions. Oh, you're having problems in college? I can't focus on okay, no problem. Here's, you know, thirty milligram Adderall, Vivance, all these things, riddling yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. all was and I so I was I was selling it and I was taking it. Yeah. I got addicted, bro. I was um drinking almost every day, I promise you, for about wow. three years. Man, actually for like about about I would say about eleven years, 
drinking four days a week was minimal. Wow. And I'm talking about like drinking, bro. I was Monday and 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 out here in Orlando, um, or we're actually we're in Dallas, but I, I live in Orlando now. But yeah. I'd be at this club Tuesday, this club Wednesday, and in the college scene, every day was a new club yeah, bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, two dollar pitchers of Long Island. Right. You know, right, so right. I'm drunk, bro. I was mm-hmm. I knew how to drive drunk. I was trained wow. in Broward. We would take those trips to Miami from Broward. You know, I would run up in liquor stores, bro, and like rob, like I mean, as much as you can take, run out, have a getaway driver, like. Yeah. I was raised in that that type of lifestyle. So yeah. I brought it to college, man. It didn't change. It just got worse. I got yeah. more strategic. And bro, I, I just, I got started getting sick. Yeah. I actually got what's called larynx pharyngeal reflux, uh-huh. um, which is when you have a hiatal hernia mm-hmm. and basically your, your esophagus, um, the part where it's, it, it, you know, it's supposed to keep down the acid mm-hmm. is um, pretty much ruptured. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a genetic disease, they say. Yeah. So acid would constantly come up. Wow. And this is around 21 years, 20 years old when I was in, you know, at UCF in Orlando, and that's when um I bro I had a big like life shock. You know, that was from the drinking, and I thought it was yeah because like I was like okay let me stop drinking mm-hmm. and I would work out and it would still be it would get worse. Wow. So I mean I dealt with that like not being able to eat, freaking out, think I was gonna die. You know, and the doctors they actually didn't know what it was. They mm-hmm. oh it's allergies. I got all these allergy tests. I got all these things. They couldn't figure it out, and I'm sitting there like bro I'm gonna die, bro. Yeah. And um, so what happened was, and I was dating this girl, um, and and I was I was I had all these other girls, but she, I, I had, there's a lot of witchcraft in the in the picture. She actually was, um, you know, she practiced that, and I found that out later. But, mm-hmm. um, I had to leave, bro. I was like, man, I told my boy I moved to Orlando with, like, let's go to New York. Yeah. Like, there's opportunities out there. You know, we you know we can we can we can make some things jump. Mm-hmm. Twenty years old, bro. And I was like, let's go get a U-Haul. Mm-hmm. We'll just grind this summer put everything in the U-Haul and go, let's try to get an apartment. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to find an apartment, trying to find an apartment, couldn't find one. They wouldn't yeah. accept us because of our credit. Yeah. And bro, we just, we hopped in the U-Haul, literally put out one bed, a queen size with all our stuff around it, mm-hmm. drove to New York City 18 hours wow. and slept in a U-Haul for two weeks. Wow. Going to clubs and bars, messing with girls. That's crazy. Taking shots. In the U-Haul, bro? In the U-Haul of New York City, bro, Manhattan. We slept in the back. We would keep the little back door you know the 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 door we'd yeah. keep it a little bit cracked for for because it was summertime it was, it was hot yeah and bro literally i would call girls yo can we come and take a shower at your place the gym yo no way bro, living reckless bro until wow. finally in brooklyn actually in crown heights um on utica and ralph if you know that set it's the straight bro it's the hood like it's yeah. ratchet yeah we um there's there was actually a hasidic jew that mm-hmm. accepted us you know with no credit yeah you know no and they, and they accepted us i mean the apartment was so ghetto bro there was yeah. no closets yeah no refrigerator it was in like section eight mm-hmm. and i remember we stayed there and that's the first time i got suicidal so wow. I, I didn't know this but i was in a new region now yeah and new demons yeah and i remember that i got really sick because i couldn't take adderall no more yeah because they in new york they were very strict they wouldn't prescribe it yeah so that i was i was i had a few adderalls left and i bro it was the you know the the, the, the actual um not the capsule but the pill yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I what i did I is like you know the orange one mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so what i did is I, I crushed it up and i like to like eight pieces and i would take a piece like microdose every day yeah, yeah, yeah. because i was fiending it bro like yeah. i couldn't focus i'd be like like I would be depressed, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, like literally, like not knowing why. Like I'm thinking everybody's against me. It mm-hmm. was the spirit of rejection and yeah. suicide working together. Yeah, bro. I thought my girl was cheating on me with all these guys. Never was. I was the one cheating. I thought my friends were against me. Like I was like, yo, you're. It's like everybody was my enemy. Yeah, you were just tweaking out, bro. And I knew I was. I was sit there like, there's no tangible evidence. Like there's nothing that there's no proof. But I'm so like, so I was cutting everybody off in my life. Yeah. The, the enemy was isolating me. I was yeah. like, like yo, you slept with my girl, and they're like, bro, what are you talking about, yeah, bro? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was setting up. I'm gonna be honest. I never said this on a, um, on a, with my testimony, but I, mean, I would set up recording devices like the record. My, like maybe he's gonna. They, 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 bro, there was not had no proof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because the devil was messing with my mind, yeah, and I, I was paranoid, and I had no Adderall, so I'm depressed. I lost like 50 pounds. I was like, bro, I couldn't eat diarrhea. Wow. Like it was bad. And I that remember was from withdrawals of Adderall. Withdrawals of Adderall. So it was physical and spiritual. Yeah. So like it was, bro, it was bad because yeah, New York is like witchcraft city. With, so I'm going. That's from, actually the HQ of like where all the witches and warlocks post up at. Exactly. So, so I was I was a lick. I'm coming from Florida where there's yeah. already a lot of witchcraft. Right. Going to an area where there's even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they see, okay, this kid got this, this, and that, bro. They're hitting me, bro. Yeah, and yeah. And then yeah, in the yeah. area where I was where I was living. Bro, now I know there was warlocks everywhere, bro. Yeah, like yeah, it was, yeah. it was. It, they they hit the, the areas of oppression. Right. So, bro, I'm just like I cut my friend off. I'm like, bro, I'm cutting you off. I just cut him off. Like he's like he was crying. Like, bro, what's wrong? I'm like, bro, I don't want it. I want nothing to do with you. Like the guy that you moved. To yes, New York to with? New York, no bro. Way. Yeah, bro. I actually wow. recently um tried to hit him up. Actually hit up his sister, and you yeah. know, you know, you know, if he watches this, Danny, I love you, bro. I, I yeah. actually want to like repent to him and just to let, let him know I love him because he's. Yeah. Solid man. Even though we weren't in Christ, bro, he was a loyal friend. Yeah. But anyways, I cut everybody off. I isolated myself. That was like, that's when I started thinking like, man, I, I'm so 
oppressed. Like the feeling I had every day was so bad. I was like, why am I even living, bro? Yeah. Like I'd rather just die. I don't, it was in my stomach. It was like, it was like some of you might be dealing with, like, it's like a feeling like you can't get over, bro. Yeah. And that's when I just was like, I want to, I, I remember sitting in a dark room and I was like, I might as well just take like a bunch of drugs or something. Like I just die. And I remember, um, I got up, went to the kitchen to wash some dishes and I heard a voice just one time say, Richard. And the voice was so powerful and peaceful that it's like, it lifted off me, bro. And I was like, yo, and I was like, that was my dead uncle. Like I thought it was my dead yeah, uncle. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know who it was. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know what it was. Now I know it was the Lord. Yeah. Cause just his voice alone, bro. Yeah. Like makes demons flee his name alone. Wow. So his, like it was God loving me before I even knew him. And that's mm -hmm. when I was like, yo, I got to get my life in order. Like I got to get a job. So I went and got my security license and started bouncing at clubs in New York city. Yeah. I, I met new friends yeah. from like, from Harlem, from lower East side. Like I have all these groups of people like Dominicans, people from Afghanistan, Puerto Ricans, like people that are from the hood, like bloods and crips. Yeah. Like I'm meeting, like the devil was sending new people. Yeah. And bro, I had a new friend base now. So now I'm getting drunk regular. Like it was worse than Florida. Now I'm on the trains, the one trains. I'm hollering at now. I'm getting New York girls. I'm I'm making money in the clubs. Now I'm like I'm like selling drugs in the clubs. I'm like, bro, it was bad. Now I'm making friends mm -hmm. that have influence in New York City. Yeah. I'm in v VIP sections. I'm with like, you know, next to famous people. Like, yeah. like, bro, I'm like next to Angelina from Jersey Shore. Like yeah. in the section right next yeah, to me, yeah, like yeah. trying to holler at her, like like yeah. stuff like that, bro, back yeah. back when it was popping. Mm -hmm. And I thought this is it. But then um, I, I was so depressed, bro, from losing my friend and just like um, just people in my life, like just isolating that I was like, bro, I knew deep down I need to leave. Yeah. I was like, it's just, this is bad. Like it's, it's So I was like, I want to go to the military. Yeah. So I went and I took the ASVAP. Yeah. And I got a very high score where I qualified, bro, like for every job. Yeah. Um, I actually barely missed it. But I think it was two points to qualify to be a nuclear engineer. Mm -hmm. Retook the test to become a nuclear engineer, which I could have taking that path to be a nuclear engineer. Mm -hmm. And they told me, they said, they said it's a four-year school or two to four-year schooling yeah. or you could um, become an air traffic controller, which is a four-month schooling and a high washout rate. Yeah. And I looked online, it's the highest suicide rate. Mm -hmm. Like people have to commit suicide because of the air traffic. It's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. And I'm thinking about time. I was like, money. I was like, how much do air traffic controllers make? Oh, about 150, 180 starting off in the war and out of the military. And I'm like, okay, four months or two years. I'll take four months. Yeah. And then I just, I, I, they gave me a contract and they were like, you're leaving in six months, mm -hmm. bro. And during that six month period, I never went to the recruiting station like you're supposed to Yeah. to check in. Yeah. I dodged the recruiter. I just was like, bro, I'm not going no more. Like yeah. everything's good in New York. Yeah. I can make, I was making about 50 grand a year. Yeah. Which is pretty good. Like yeah. as a yeah, twenty one year old For a kid. Twenty one year old kid, that's pretty good. Bro, yeah. I had got that I had got a nice spot in Washington Heights, Upper West Side, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I had a bro in, in New York, if you have a washer and dryer in your apartment, you're yeah. blessed. I had a washer right, and right. dryer in my apartment. I had a, a living room. Like, bro, I was living like a king king size bed. Yeah. I had I had got a hookah. I had yeah. bro I had E B T. So I was like, yeah. bro, I had like three or four hundred dollars a month. I was yeah. like, bro, I had connections with the A Rabs at the bodegas. Like yeah. I'm like, bro, like I'm living life, have yeah, all yeah, these yeah. girls now. Like yeah. I'm 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 happy, but I but I was like, man, I'm not going to the military, bro. And I would tell the recruiter, like, you know, when I did talk to him, like, bro, I'm smoking, I'm drinking, I'm popping pills. Like, yeah. I'm not going to be able to pass a drug test. And right. this dude, bro, it was God. This God used him. This dude would not give up. Wow. And now that I, you know, I've been in the military, I know that it wasn't about um, numbers because, yeah. like, it's they, they do have to meet a certain quota, but mm -hmm. that doesn't, like, kick him out the military. It doesn't. It wasn't like he went so hard for one. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of like Jesus leaves a 99 for yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like maybe I, I, maybe he was Christian. I don't know. But this dude cannot, did not stop. This yeah. Puerto Rican dude, I forgot his name. He just wouldn't stop. And bro, like, I mean, it was four days before I was supposed to dip out. July 5th, 2012, to go to Chicago, Great Lakes, to go to boot camp. Mm -hmm. This man shows up at my apartment in the hood, of, like in Washington Heights. If y'all know where Washington Heights is, I lived on 191st and Broadway, Wadsworth. Y'all know that's, bro, that's like, that's gang territory yeah, for Dominicans. Yeah. Like people get killed and put in body bags out yeah. there regularly yeah and this man pulled up and bro you know he was scared a little bit knocked on you know the door and i'm like bro what are you doing here i just yeah. i just woke up at three o'clock in the afternoon from drinking all night you know mm -hmm. like just shirt off like what's yeah, up man what are you doing <laughs> he sits down like look how much you making i'm like you know about 50 grand he was like man you can make that right now joining the military yeah bro you gotta go man like didn't you say you want to change your lifestyle this man just started preaching and i'm like bro wow. i felt like man maybe he's right and he's like look you, you gotta go and I'm like man if I'm gonna go like who's gonna take over my rent from mm -hmm. my from my from my apartment who's gonna take over yeah who's and I'm like he was like I'll do I'll do it and I'm like no so way. you're gonna pay the rent to, to live here that's bro. straight out of a movie bro bro straight out of a movie and, he, <laughs> he, and, and I was like what about all my stuff like I got TVs he was like I'll buy it yeah 
this man he has a, he has a family living in a house like yeah and like in New York. I'm like, what are you? What are you doing? He's like, bro, because I really want to see you change your life, bro. He took over the rent, told my landlord I'm gonna take over, bro. I had four days, so I literally called my boy. Yo, we got to pack everything, put it into a little closet in the apartment that they let me lock up. I went back to Broward, said bye to my family. My dad was like, what are you doing, like, bro? I can't. I came. I remember the night before I left, bro. Me and my boy on July 4th, 4th of July, I drank a bottle of Hennessy, didn't sleep, and had every girl that I knew on rotation at the time mm-hmm. come through and just to like have sexual intercourse like yeah. like just a party like and bro i didn't sleep he picked me up i mean bro like i went straight to you know the boot camp i remember walking the great lakes you know getting off that bus <laughs> they start yelling at yeah. you i'm like bro how am i gonna pass this piss test yeah, yeah yeah and i was just like man if it's you know like if it's meant to be it's meant to be yeah pass the piss test wow yeah bro and i started withdrawing again because now i'm like i, I was an alcoholic for so yeah, long yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not drinking there's no I'm, I'm not taking anything bro like i went from adderall adderall and alcohol to like just more alcohol. Yeah. So now, bro, I'm in boot camp. I can't drink. I can't do nothing. That 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 disease I had was like, was like really like, and I couldn't take. You can't take medicine. Yeah. I, I had lied. I, I told them I had no medical issues. Mm-hmm. So they so like they they don't allow you in. If you have medical issues, you can't go in the military. Yeah. So I like I'm stuff is coming up. I'm mm-hmm. like super like withdraw. I, yeah. like, like bro, think I'm going through think getting shot up with all this stuff. They shoot you up with the military yeah. like all those crazy shots. If you know yeah. what I'm talking about the peanut butter shot, they put a big old needle in your butt, bro. Yeah. Cra- crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, like I just was like depressed. I barely made it through because I was I was causing so much. I was so angry. Yeah. So I was so disobedient and rebellious. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't listen to the drill instructors. Like they would yell at me and I just laugh. Like yeah. they'd be like like drop and do push ups. I just do push ups laughing. Like yeah. I would like I was I was cause I was I was selling cookies, bro. Yeah. In in the barracks, like yeah. which, is, which you're not supposed to do. Right, right, right. I had, right. A, I had a plug with the with the, with the lady, the, sh- the little chef lady. You know, she would give me extra cookies. Yeah. Long story short, bro, I made it though. My yeah. God. And I, By the and way, I, cookies is a strain. Uh, it's he wasn't selling literal cookies for anybody. Well, no, actually, no. Real talk, I was. Oh, for real? <laughs> oh, you were actually selling. So cookies? like, so like in the military, like they give you five minutes to eat. Yeah. You get into a line. You go to what's called the chow hall, and they yeah. they they literally say five minutes. Yeah. So, bro, you have, you have to get in the line. You have to get the food and like literally. Oh, so you were selling legit? So, co- I thought you were talking about like like selling packs and stuff. Yeah, I, I did that too. Okay, but like, okay. but like, but like, the the lady was so nice to me. The lady, the the, the chef lady, I would be like, "Yo, let me get some more cookies." And yeah. then when they're not looking, I would put it in my pocket. Yeah. And then when I get to the barracks, because bro, you only get three meals a day, but like you're doing so much, like people are hungry. Mm-hmm. I started selling literal cookies. Yeah. If you're in the military, you know what it's about, like. Bro, if, if you can get the cigarettes in, if you can get the cookies in, the things that people like they want, you could literally start making money in yeah. boot camp because they don't allow none of that. Mm-hmm. You can't t- you can't call nobody. There's no phone calls. Like you're in, you're pretty much locked up for two months. So, bro, I was selling cookies, all that. I remember they have flipped my rack, which means they they open your 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 bed where all your stuff is stored, and they like investigate, bro. They like, my drill instructor had a vendetta against me to make sure I didn't make it. He he literally would tell me like I'm gonna make sure because they would call you a, a ish bag like mm-hmm. a the mm-hmm. shi. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna get in like bro yeah. and i would be like yes i am but this other drill instructor had grace mm-hmm. liked me actually he was like man i like you remind me of me and he got me in bro yeah. it's always god's grace barely yeah, 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 yeah. I, all, bro, all my homeboys getting locked up in the world doing like bro like federal like like federal charges i always was like getting away yeah like we were getting chased by cops get away wow. like, my homeboy getting locked up getting away like wow Bro, I remember my boy calling me with a fifty thousand dollar bail and a, and something we did together, sticking somebody up. Yeah. At the age of eighteen, and he got caught, and I remember the cop coming up to me, putting the gun in my face, bro. Yeah. And me just looking and like my other boy who was running and just ran and got away. Like yeah. so, like I didn't know that there was actually favor on my life, bro, because yeah. of my grandma's prayers. But anyways, yeah. so I got in the military, bro. You think it would get better? It got worse, bro. Now I'm like, you know what? I have an associate's degree from UCF. By the way, I got kicked out of UCF yeah. for cheating on for cheating and forging um doctor's notes. Oh wow. So like I I can't go back to UCF even to this day. Yeah. Oh so, wow, you're banned. Yeah, I'm banned from UCF. So I had uh I had two um I had got an associate's degree two years, my gen eds. But I I was like, man, like I want to finish up. So I I joined the military, bro. They by the way, they paid off all my my debt, my loans. Wow. Now I can go to school for free. Mm-hmm. I, I actually got accepted to um to Drexel University, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is what they call like borderline Ivy League yeah, in yeah. Philly. Yeah. And um I got I actually got stationed back in Jersey, bro. So now I'm going to Drexel online. I'm getting my degree. I got my actual bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. Um, bro, I went to graduate school at Oklahoma State. I'll, as I'm doing all this in the military as mm-hmm. an air traffic controller, bro, I'm drinking yeah. worse than I was because if you if you're in the Navy, bro, you know. Like it's they, that's actually like the, the the sailors' creed. They talk about getting drunk, mm-hmm. drunk woman, sex, like, but just make sure you show up on time, no matter what. So they teach you how to organ be organized, like, 
like demon. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Freemasons in the military, too. Right, there are, yeah. And they tried to recruit me mm-hmm. three times to become yeah. a Freemason. Like, actually, like, I almost got, I got invited to a lodge. Yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. By the grace of God. And I actually wanted to join. Like, yeah. Like, I was like, I want to join. But by the grace of God. And I know that, 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 um, that, um, there's people on here right now that are probably free, Freemasons. You, you saw the video of me casting out a spirit that comes in through Freemasons. Look, Freemasonry is completely demonic. So demonic. You can be free, though. Yeah. You can be free. You guys can go watch the video. I, there's a, a Freemason that came to the church, gave up the ring, and got delivered from demons, man. He's set free. But in the military, bro, it was just worse. I mean, um, I'm going to be honest. I, 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 I was just cutting corners worse than ever, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I was still robbing. Yeah. Now, now I was like... I'm going to start selling drugs. Like mm-hmm. they'll never expect it. Yeah. All my friends from the world, bro, they knew me as a reckless dude. So now I'm trapping, bro. Like I start moving packs. Mm-hmm. I'm in Jersey and this is the first time I got introduced to Molly. This is when Molly went crazy. Yeah. And they were like, I was at a bar one time smoking a cigarette. I, I didn't smoke cigarettes like that, but when I drank, I did. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the, I'm, I'm smoking a cigarette and then some girls like, do you have Molly? If you have Molly. Like, and I'm like, Molly. Yeah. You have, you have to pop Molly out here in Jersey. She was like, yeah, cause Jersey's known for drugs, bro. Is it, is it really? Oh, bro, people die, like, bro, people die regularly for drugs. There's a lot, wow. of, a lot of drug addicts. The spirit of addictions over yeah. that Leviathan too, like murder. Yeah. Uh, I mean, more, mainly death. But I was like, okay, Molly, uh, let me figure this out. I called up some people, my boys back in Broward, who are trapping regularly. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yo, Rich, like, there's a there's a whole Molly epidemic. Like, like people like people are fiending for it right yeah. now. And I knew that they, I knew their prices, but I was like, I can get it cheaper. Mm-hmm. And I found a plug in Jersey, actually. Mm-hmm. And then I started the dark web. I started mm-hmm. messing with the dark web. So, like... Yeah. I was getting the purest MDMA. Yeah. I'm talking about pure, like ecstasy. Ecstasy is usually mixed with MDMA. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, bro, I'm getting, um, you know, quarter kilos of, of Molly mm-hmm. and I'm selling it. And I'm, bro, I was booming in Jersey, bro, booming. Yeah. And I remember I had a boy, he was like, bro, if you sold weed, you man, if you sold weed, bro, I'd buy everything from you. So during this Molly period, like I remember my plug just started moving funny. I had to handle some things like, cause he almost tried to rob me. But anyways, yeah. I was like, oh my bro, gosh, wow. you know, you know who actually told me to stop selling Molly? Who? Alex, my brother. Wow. One day he called me. He was like, bro, like you're in the military selling Molly. Like, yeah. bro, if you get caught. And he was like, yo, just sell weed. And my yeah. brother was like, yo, we sell weed over here in Gainesville. He was, he was, he was by U, U, UF, by, mm-hmm. by um, Santa Fe. Yeah. He was like, yo, where you? and he's like, he's, my brother was like 18. Yeah. He was like, bro, I'll send you some weed. Yeah. He sent me some some weed. It was, it was gas. It was good weed. Yeah. And I told my boy, the one that, that said, if you had weed, I was like, what you think? He was like, bro. And he gave me like, bro, like double the price. Yeah. And I'm like. Wait, I just doubled up on some weed. Yeah. Weed's not that illegal. I was like, okay. So I put two and two together and asked all my boys, where's the plug? They were like, Cali. Mm-hmm. Cali. If you go to Cali, I heard it's cheap. Yeah. Cali. So I, I was like, I'm going to Cali. Yeah. So, bro, in faith, by, by this time I was 25. I'm still making military paycheck. I, I got my degree. I'm doing well. I'm like sailor of the year at my base. Like, I'm, I'm hitting the gym daily, bro. I was dunking at this point. I was in shape, benching 315. Like, yeah. had all these women. 315, okay. Yeah, hit, 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 hit a few times. Like, I was, bro, I was like 190 ripped. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Best shape of my life. Like, wow. When you're in the military, bro, it's alcohol, woman, gym. Right. There's a lot of people that take steroids. Oh, tons. Like, but I, in the military? Oh, bro, I'd watch them. Oh wow! My boys shoot up and then go. Yeah, it's, it's illegal, but like as long as like as long as you don't get caught. Bro, steroids is actually witchcraft. For people don't know about this, but um, when you're taking steroids, what is witchcraft? Manipulation. Yes. You're manipulating the chemicals in your body, and steroids actually greatly decrease your testosterone. Yep. And so it's all like witchcraft can only operate in the illusion that it presents. Yes. So a lot of these people who take steroids, they look super jacked, right? But their test levels are like drastically low their natural test yeah yeah and so you're actually better off like you're better off not taking roids going all natural because even if you don't look super jacked on the outside your testosterone levels won't be all screwed up yep i uh you know i'm gonna be transparent with you satan would whisper in my ear like look at all these people in the gym like you know they got high testosterone you need to start taking steroids so you can look big like them and i was like I actually, for a second, even in Christ, was debating taking steroids. I'm going to be vulnerable with everybody watching right now. And, but the Lord always put it on my heart and convicted me, no, don't do that. It's witchcraft. And I'm Come like – so I was actually wrestling with taking uh, – on whether I should take Rad 140 or not. Mm-hmm. And, and the Lord always was telling me no. And I knew the voice of God was telling me no. I could hear it audibly. But I was still like – the my flesh was kind of lusting after the idea Ooh. of it. Um and by the grace of God, when I went to go get my blood work done, right, I was sitting with the with the doctor there, and I was like, "Yeah, I want to get my testosterone levels checked," and he's like, 
uh, I'm just letting you know right now, the time that you're getting the levels checked, it's really low. So I don't want to give you an inaccurate reading. You should come tomorrow at 4 a.m. Because he's like, that's when – because he that, said – That's when it's the highest. That's when it's the highest. That's what he was saying. Fast it up too. Yeah. yeah and I'm like – and I'm like, nah, I want to get it done now. I'm just curious. I want to know what my levels are at. Because I was actually like wanting to see if my levels were low or not. Mm. And he's like, I'll, I'll let you take your reading right now, but I'm just letting you know it's going to be super low. He's like, are you sure you want to do it? I'm like, yeah, I don't care if it's low. I'll, I'll compartmentalize it in my head that it's higher. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just, just give me the test results. <laughs> Bro, I took, I took my uh, testosterone results, and I had scored almost at a 700 at 12 p.m., when it was super low. Wow. And I realized right then and there that Satan was lying to me the whole time. And these the, these lies from demons that were ministering to me, your testosterone level is low because you're not jacked. It was all a facade, bro. Yeah. But if I had listened to that lie of the enemy, I would have potentially uh, involved myself in witchcraft. Yeah. And so what you have to understand is, is to take captive these lies that Satan is telling you because these lies are not reality. Yeah, they're not. And I learned that. And it's all about image. Yep. People do it because, like, um, bro, it's image, bro. Like, yeah. when I was in the military, it was all image. Mm-hmm. I, I lifted weights because I wanted girls to like me mm-hmm. more. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, if I look better, yeah, I'll get more, you know, girls. Yeah. And like I was, and I, even with the guys, like, if I look jacked, like, they won't try to fight me. Yeah, yeah, I'm in yeah, these yeah. bars and clubs actually, like, fighting, bro. Like, yeah. Like in the bar, like in the park, a lot of bars, bro. Drunk out my mind, like mm-hmm. throwing hands, like hitting people, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, like it was crazy, bro. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. It was, and now that I'm in Christ, I do it because I want to take care of my temple. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is true, bro. Like now, there's there's people that are sick. Mm-hmm. Like they might be sick, and they might be like literally like they need steroids. That's yeah. different. That's different, yeah. But if you're taking steroids because you literally want to look good, yeah, that is witchcraft. That is. It's, witchcraft. Just, it's just like right now, if I if I was getting my leg. Surgery, let's mm-hmm. say there was, I don't know, my bone, mm-hmm. and I get some surgery on my leg. Yeah, I'm gonna get anesthesia, bro. You better knock me yeah, out. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to watch that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. not that's okay, but if I but if I'm shooting that stuff up because I want to get a high, like mm-hmm. I want heroin and meth, bro, that's where you're like you're like you said, it literally becomes witchcraft, right? Right, it's the intention, it's like it's like that God ain't tell you to do that, yeah. So if you're out there and you're taking steroids and you're like, because I want to get jacked, I want to look good for that, think about it. That's why the Lord was telling Nick, no, because it's true, yeah, like. If you're doing it for image, if you're doing it because you want to like like beat like it's a counterfeit like yeah. you want to you want you want to like like, like what's, what's, what's 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 the word um what's the saying um you want to skip the line or you want to mm-hmm. cut exactly. corner cut corners exactly. cut corners yeah yeah it's not hard work you're you're taking synthetic st- testosterone when you already have natural so what does it do yeah for like the, the last the next three months you might get super swollen look mm-hmm. crazy but then guess what happens when you stop shooting it and you have to cycle off yeah your natural test is like it stopped because yeah. your pituitary gland is not going to produce it yeah because it's already like your body body's already like oh there's testosterone mm-hmm. we don't need to produce it so now your body like it has to re- readjust that's why mm-hmm. people they have to shoot up then they got like they have to take estrogen while they're taking testosterone yeah and then when they cycle off they gotta take test boosters yeah and they're still like brother depression my boys would go through like the like the like cr- like it's crazy like yeah. once you start taking it you can't stop like there's there's famous people like the rock mm-hmm. they admit it they take it yeah he can't stop he can't stop no because the withdrawals would be so crazy and if you stop you actually well the rock doesn't have hair but you would lose your hair yeah you lose your hair um and your test levels completely decimate it's actually scary i had a, f- a friend who uh weaned off of it and he c- looked completely different um guys we're gonna go to break real quick and we're gonna be right back talking more about Pastor Rich's testimony. I'm really excited to get into it. So we'll see you guys after the break. All right, guys, we are back. I'm back here again with my steroid-free guest, Pastor Richard Lorenzo. steroid <laughs> So, yeah, we were just talking about it, man. The steroids really jacks you up. If you're, you know, uh, a guy watching this, I don't think girls don't take steroids, right? They do, bro. Do they really? Out in Jersey. I lived in Jersey, man. Like, yeah. like girls are, like, they actually, they yeah, they do. Oh, that's Wild, and they'll bro. be jacked. So like, if you're a guy or girl watching this, don't take roids. I'm glad I didn't. You know, there's things even when you're in Christ, there's still things that you can uh, be deceived about. And I actually, while I was saved, I was watching a documentary on steroids about how they weren't as bad as people said they were. But no, dude, steroids are terrible. And so yeah. we all natural here. Uh, praise God. Come on. Um, yeah, they're just like you wouldn't take meth. Like right, you wouldn't take heroin. It's 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 a synthetic drug. That you're shooting in your into your body mm-hmm. that stops the natural production. Yeah, and it, and it that's 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 where it becomes sorcery. That's yeah, where, it becomes witchcraft because you're trying to control 
your body when your body's supposed to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. Right, right. So what we should be doing is praying and asking God, give me more strength, give right. me more energy, like give me the motivation to get up off my butt. Right. Because it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not a God problem, it's a you problem. Exactly, yeah. You, you're probably like, I just need steroids. Like, no, you need to get up and you need to go run and you need to work out. And I'm telling you, like, <laughs> yeah. putting your body in submission, like literally, like the, the, the Bible talks about it. Mm -hmm. Like putting your body under submission. Like you have to do that. You have to work hard, be diligent. Yeah. Because the flesh sucks, man. The flesh is whack, bro. <laughs> <It's bad>. um, <laughs> like the flesh That's a bar. is trash. But um, I wanted to talk about this too. You have a very powerful testimony. Let's get it. I mean- you know, you used to be a warlock yeah, it's about in to Haiti get, yeah, it's about doing to get voodoo. Real. Yep. I mean, that's a huge part of your testimony. And you're now a pastor at a church in Orlando called Remnant Revival Outreach Center, doing deliverances regularly, doing healings regularly. I mean, you're a prophet of God. You go up to people, you prophesy to them accurately. You give them words of knowledge. Amen. Um, I mean, you're moving in all the gifts, bro, by the grace of God. Yes, sir. How did you go from being a legitimate warlock in Haiti mm -hmm. to a powerful man of God in Orlando, Florida? Okay, so great question. So I was actually in witchcraft um, mm -hmm. after the military. So yeah. uh, let's fast forward past all that. I'm in California. I mean, I was I was stationed in Greece mm -hmm. um, and before California, and that's when I actually started seeking a higher power. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know the truth. Because I had all this money, cars, like everything I was acquiring in the Navy, you know, selling drugs and living and living a double life, mm -hmm. I was, but I was empty. Mm -hmm. So I cried out to the higher power in Greece on the island of Crete, which actually is where the Book of Titus is written. Wow, yeah. And um, and I cried out, God, if you, or I said, I said, higher power, whoever they are, we are, you are, whatever, show me yourself. And I heard a voice say, I'm going to show you now. Mm -hmm. So I got back to Cali. Now I'm like, bro, I'm about to take this drug dealing to a whole another level. Yeah. I go to Humboldt, California. Mm -hmm. Which is um, it's about three hour, three and a half hours north of the bay. Yeah, that's where that's the marijuana marijuana mecca. Mm -hmm. And I, I got a plug. I went out there with fifty fifty thousand dollars with no plug in my strap, and I just went to what's called Murder Mountain, where people get killed. Wow! And I got an Asian plug, Asian yeah. mafia. I was yeah. getting pounds of weed for very cheap, bro, like three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. selling them for two thousand. Like yeah. that's a crazy profit margin. Yeah. So now I'm making even more money, thinking money would fulfill me, getting even more girls. Now I'm buying more properties. Now I'm having more cars. I got my auction license. I have all these cars on this hill in La Mesa, California, near SDSU. You know, you yeah. know where that's yeah, at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, I used to live near there. And I bought the condo. Like, I'm living like the man, bro. But then I was empty. Mm -hmm. And um, a package went missing in the mail for mm -hmm. about $20,000 worth of marijuana. Wow. But I was sending them out regularly. Like, yeah. bro, we were sending packs like like every the beginning of, I would say about every three weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm sending out about $150,000 worth, worth of marijuana. Yeah. And then getting it back at least two fifty, mm -hmm. like minimum back. So like I would send it out to my boys in different places. Like Dallas actually was mm -hmm. a big... A big area where I made a lot of money. Was it really? Because they're very strict about that here in Texas. I'm not going to say his name, yeah. but my best friend um, in the world, uh, he's... We played ball together. He actually still lives in Dallas, mm -hmm. and he was the actual guy I plugged up. And wow. I'm praying for him to get saved. Amen. But um, I used to I used to send. I was I was I was a supplier. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was I was actually the one that supplied the plugs. Yeah. So I was supplying people in Dallas, supplying people in Houston. Actually, my cousin, who you're gonna meet, he's coming up here. He's saved now. Mm -hmm. His name is Juan um, Juan One Love on mm -hmm. TikTok. He's pretty famous on TikTok. Mm -hmm. He's a DJ for like house music, Christian music. But I used yeah. to plug him up. He actually owed me money. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy testimony. But um, I mean, Florida, Broward, New York. I mean, bro, I was I was even sending drugs in, to Portugal, Greece, mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. I'm making money, bro. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not even having to go anywhere. I'm yeah. just collecting and I'm sending, collecting mm -hmm. and I'm sending. And bro, I was empty. So when I lost that twenty twenty thousand dollar package, that's when I was like, yo, I want to figure out who stole it. Mm -hmm. So because I was a hundred percent in the mail, bro. Like. Mm -hmm. I would say almost a hundred. Like, bro, packages weren't going missing because I yeah. knew the system. Yeah, I knew how to vacuum seal it. I knew how to wipe it down with alcohol. I knew yeah. how to how how it would go. Like, it would go under the you know the the, the surveillance area yeah, 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 yeah. and not get detected. Yeah, you know. So I'm like, bro, this it's supposed to be here. One week goes by, two weeks, and I'm like, and I'm the devil saying everything. Oh, your friends robbed you. Oh. Yeah. It's the feds. So I'm like, is it the feds? I'm getting dreams yeah, of the feds. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, it's my. So I was like, I want to figure it out. And the girl I was dating, you know, I knew that her family, um, she's Haitian. She, uh, they did voodoo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I, I thought that stuff was cap. I was like, yeah. voodoo, voodoo is fake. If you believe in it, it's real. If you don't, yeah. it's not real. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, your cousin's a voodoo priest from what you told me a while ago. She's like, yeah, I was like, then I want to, I want to find out where my package is. Mm -hmm. I can't figure it out in the physical. Yeah. And she was like, he can. So she calls, she calls him. He only speaks Creole. He's like, hey, if you want to know, you got to come to Haiti. Mm -hmm. So she was like, you got to come to Haiti. It's all good. Don't worry about it. And I actually went to a voodoo priest in L.A. Mm -hmm. who actually is the one who does, who did rituals for Snoop Dogg. Yeah. I mean, I was in his um, actual, like, his, uh, his, uh, his demonic little area where he yeah. does all the rituals. And I seen pictures with Snoop Dogg's famous people. Mm -hmm. And he had told me a few things. And then that's when I was like, bro, I need to know, like, I, I, need to go to, I need to go to Haiti. And she thought I was crazy. Like, what are you doing? You can't yeah. go to Haiti. You're, 
you're not even Haitian. Like, yeah. they're going to kill you. I was like, I don't care either. You come with me or I'm going by myself. Mm-hmm. So she was like, all right, let's go. Yeah. And we went. I mean, um, and he's in Jack Mel Haiti where even the Clintons, they have a property because they do voodoo regularly Oh, yeah. As well. The Clintons. The, oh, that I love that you know that, bro. The Clintons oh. are... The Clintons are always in Haiti because the Clintons are always either, you know, trafficking out there or mm-hmm. they're doing straight up voodoo. The Clintons Both. are actually some of the most demonic politicians out of all of them. Very. And so they, they, have, they, they have a lot of property in Jack Mo. And You know, there's like, actually a video uh, of the Clintons and George Soros with kids in Haiti, like like ushering them like like cattle, bro. It's crazy because these Democrat politicians and some, some of these Republicans too because they low-key work together. I mean, bro, they're always in Haiti because number one – they can traffic easily out there. There's heavy witchcraft there. Um, perfect atmosphere. It's the perfect atmosphere for basically degeneracy and Satanism, truly. Yeah, you got money. Mm-hmm. They treat you like a king. Right. Because they're so – they're with poverty. It's a third world country. Like, right. I'm, I'm, I'm in Jackma, bro, and I was, I was actually like – I was on guard like with my mm-hmm. little pocket knife. Because as soon as you get off the plane in Port-au-Prince, bro, like they mob you. Like wow. you're with your bags and you're walking outside. Just imagine like both sides of where you're walking is full of Haitians. Like, yeah. hey, hey. like bro, you feel like, you're like I'm about to die. Like, yeah. like they're going to kill me. Like, yeah. there's no, And then, you know what I'm saying? But we had we had people that we knew that were in the government out there and they helped they helped guide us to J- Jack Mel. We drove there. Yeah. Bro, and then that's when the first time I saw I saw a real deal voodoo. The first time I was in L.A. and he had told me, he had read my cards and all that stuff and told me some real things but didn't give me the answer. Yeah. It was a devil just trying to reel me into Haiti. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I went to Haiti, bro, and I seen like the compound that her cousin had, which had multiple huts, multiple demonic churches. Yeah. The man was, I mean, the man su- was successful. I mean, yeah. had a literal school, had a engineering company, business, like school for engineer. Like, bro, like the man had money mm-hmm. and he was a whole voodoo, pr- 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 mm-hmm. you know, warlock. And I remember him saying, come on, you know, come to this hut. And I mean, there was human skulls, bro. Mm-hmm. Like in the hut, they they were dug, they were digging up, you know, skeletons. Yeah, and I'm seeing this stuff, like, bro, like, how is this even good? This is crazy, and I felt it. Even in the world, I was yeah. like, oh, like with the alcohol bottles, with the the peppers in it, and like, bro, weird stuff, which yeah. you guys have seen. I, I exposed it on my YouTube channel. I went to a voodoo shop, and I'm watching this, bro, and he puts on this outfit, and then he has to do a ritual. So he has to start dancing, yeah, putting on music and singing actual mm-hmm. demonic worship, yeah, to what they call Loas, L W A S, which is supposed to be an ancestral spirit, mm-hmm. which is not. It's it's a demon. It's a demon. It's a, yeah. it's, it, probably a, in Haiti they probably are, are actual like working with the fallen angels. Like yeah, hundred percent. The Nephilim are the offspring, but the actual like there's only a certain amount of fallen angels. They're probably working with high ranking fallen angels. Hundred percent. So yeah, I'm seeing this, bro, and I'm like, they're, they're, he like the demon actually possessed him. Like I yeah. saw him going from like regular like doing the little drum ritual like dancing like i'm and i'm just sitting there like i'm like bro this is weird yeah and all of a sudden like yeah. like, like that and then like whole face changed eyes looked at me wow. like bro like and i'm like that's wild and doesn't, doesn't speak any english and then we had a translator and they, and they did like what questions do you have and you got to put the money there that you give like you gotta, you gotta sew onto the demon wow it's crazy christians don't even sew onto the church but wow long story but yeah, yeah. yeah but like yeah they, you have to give a certain amount like yeah. a specific amount 57 77 one, 101 like 11 like certain amount you give it and then you have to bring a bottle of rum because the because the actual person the voodoo priest has to chug the rum in order to summon the demon that's why we have what's called wine and spirits yeah exactly because bro, like people have to drink hard alcohol yeah. in order for the demon to for the th- demon to come in. Because I talked about this on a on a, on another podcast about how alcohol is like a spiritual portal portal towards demonic spirits. Big time, and like it's it's easy for the demon to take over because you're like you're low key like giving up control of your soul in that point. Yep, and you're creating like a, a easy atmosphere for the de- the demon to really met like move. Right, he would have to drink the alcohol and then smoke a cigar. Yeah. And like and like and then the demon would possess him, yeah. and then he would be he bro he would be gone. Yeah, like I'm talking about when when he woke up, he would be like I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. So the, the demon would be like eating food, like because the demon has a vessel now to actually enjoy the lustful desires. Mm-hmm. So be eating like yeah. bro, like a pig, bro. Wow, like it's 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 crazy. And then he was the demon would start speaking and telling me things, bro, that was legitimately I'm not gonna cap it was accurate. Yeah, spot on things about my past. I'm like, how does he know that? Yeah. And then and reading cards and doing all the sorcery and then and then and then what happens with the devil is he'll tell you about things in the past but then start giving you lies. Mm. Oh, but your family's against you, your 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 cousins against you, your friends yeah. are against you. So now doing the same thing that happened in New York, 
I never said this. I just caught it right now. Yeah. Doing the same thing. I'm 29 right now. Wow. I was 28 doing the same thing that happened at 21. Yeah. Putting people against me again to isolate myself to try to kill me. That's why. So I'm like, what? Like, and they're like, yeah, you know, this person's like, don't trust this person. Like, you got to do this ritual and pay this amount of money so that I can, so we can do a, 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 a protection on you. Like, bro. And I'm thinking like, cause the man had said like five or six things that were true. I'm like, bro. Yeah. Like, but, but the, the, the one thing about the devil is he can't predict the future. No, he can't. So when someone prophesies accurately and actually says what's going to happen and it comes to pass, mm -hmm. that's, that's from the Lord. Right, right. But it's when someone, because I'm going to say this right now, there are demonic words of knowledge. Yeah, there are. Like people can get a word and it's very simple because the demons are in the spirit realm. They can see everything going on. Entering spirits everywhere. They're, they're everywhere. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't even know they got demons on them. Like they're right. these worldly people that don't have the Holy Ghost. Right. They, even some Christians, they have demons that are watching them. Like, right, like right, I, I always use this analogy. I can go to McDonald's right now, get a number four at 1230 in the afternoon yeah. and then go to a, a warlock and the, the demon that's been trailing me or with me or inside of me could easily, as soon as I go to get my cards read, just speak to the other demon mm -hmm. who will tell the, the witch or the warlock, tell them at 1230 they went to McDonald's and, and then they'll just tell you at 1230. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're reading the card. You went to McDonald's and now the person's like, <gasps> and they got you. Right. Now you have faith. And whatever they say. Exactly. Because that's how they operate, these monitoring spirits. It's like a surveillance camera in the spirit. And so Satan knows that he's not all-powerful and omnipresent. So he uses, like, the lower chain in command, these demons yes. that, and, and, and these, you know, monitoring spirits to essentially bring that omnipresent value to him. And that's why Satan thrives off of not only surveillance in the spirit realm, but surveillance in the natural realm. You yes. look at stuff like these 5G towers, for example, right, which have... Which, which it's really advanced technology. Uh, you know, thermal readings, they can, they can look like inside people's houses with these 5G uh, towers and they can look at like somebody's thermal body temperature. You know, like all of these uh, surveillance, uh, you know, inventions that the elite are coming out with right now, this is all like for Satan himself to gain that uh, omnipresent, so to speak. Illusion. Uh, to, to, to gain that omnipresent uh, aspect of human life. Because he wants to be everywhere at once, but he can't. can't. Only Jesus can. And so that's why he imitates and copies everything with surveillance in the spirit and in the natural. Um, and as we see you know, more of a government crackdown and higher surveillance, for example, George Orwell, he wrote this book, 1984. You should check it out. Um, but basically about I a love dystopian. That book. Yeah, it's I read, a great I read book. It, I read it in high school. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's basically a book about a dystopian reality with uh, Titan surveillance. And what mm. people don't understand is that that is necessary for the end times, for the Antichrist, yep. because he's going to try to imitate Christ as much as possible. Yeah. And how does he do that? By being omnipresent. Yes, yeah, sir. 1984, so, great yes, book. Sir. Amen. So, yeah, at this point, bro, I'm in Haiti and I've and I seen that. And I, now I'm like believing. I'm like, bro, this is real. So I'm like, bro, like when I get back, I'm going to go all out. Yeah. So when I get back, like, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to go to an Indian medium. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go to a psychic. Now I'm learning. Now yeah. they're teaching me. Everyone they're, And they're all trying to use me. They're like trying to exalt me. Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to be, this is your ancestral roots. <laughs> you're supposed to be a, a, a Santero, like Puerto Rican. And then like, oh, I'm like, yeah. I'm thinking like, and I'm, I'm wearing the beads now. Yeah. And I got the evil eye on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and now I'm like, you know, I need to go to New Orleans. Like mm. I went to Haiti. New Orleans is number two. If you know about witchcraft, yeah. Haiti's number one. Yeah, New Orleans is number two for sure. New Orleans is number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows the most powerful witchcraft comes out of Haiti. Yeah. And then number two is going to be New Orleans. They call it hoodoo. Mm -hmm. So they got voodoo and then they got hoodoo, mm -hmm. which is what they call in, in, um, in New Orleans. And a lot of the French came to New Orleans. Yeah. The French went to Haiti. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and, the, and the Creole descent. So I was, in, I was in New Orleans. I was actually being guided by a demon. I was listening to the voice of a demon taking me to places. Wow, it was it was it was like it was a false Holy Spirit, right? Like like a, like Kundalini Spirit almost. Exactly, well, it, probably it was demonic. And by the way, I did yoga for years, like yeah, 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 many yeah. like ohms and all that. Yeah. But at this, but this is a whole nother level now. So like now I'm in I'm in the, the witchcraft shops, and I got taken to one specifically where it was a it was a warlock that was on some like I've been waiting for you, <laughs> Puerto Rican guy, bro. Like yeah. no cap, like literally I was and I was like this is it. Yeah. And he's like, okay, come to the back, and they do like a whole free ritual, like brother. No, he didn't even want money. And bro, he's like, he's like, you're supposed to be a dual inducted warlock. I'm, I'm going to take you to Haiti and Puerto Rico. We need to go in October during Halloween time. Wow. You're going to stay one week at each cemetery, like in the, in the area we go to. And you got to, and you got to pretty much like 
You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do a consecration with the devil. Wow, that's crazy. it's perversion of what we're supposed to do in Christ. Right, Consecrate right. with the Lord, bro. Right. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's why you're so on fire now, like with the Lord. Like people don't know about this, but you be consecrating in the mountains for like a whole week. Yep. Phone off, mm -hmm. no contact, just you and the Lord, because you learn that from you know these voodoo rituals and yep. stuff. Because I, I saw how they did it when I came right. to Christ. I had a lot of questions for God, like God, why do they do it? And when He taught me, the devil only perverts what I do, just yeah. like words of knowledge. Like the devil gives demonic words of knowledge, but yeah. in Christ, we're supposed to get words of knowledge to help to help the body of Christ. Right. You see, if when you get a word of knowledge or a prophetic word, if it points somebody to Christ, good to go. Yeah. But if you get a word of knowledge and it doesn't point nobody to Christ and it's just to say, I got a word of knowledge, mm -hmm. what that's called is witchcraft. That's witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. I learned like, that in your discipleship course, actually. You have to, you have to point people, amen. Yeah. You have to point people to Christ. That's how you know, that's, that's where you can discern a false prophet mm -hmm. to a real prophet. Yeah. Is that, is that a false prophet's always going to point you away from God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, like don't, like it's not about Jesus. It's about the gifts. It's not about Jesus. It's yeah. about you know, the, this, it's, it's not like, oh, you, you don't have to repent. Yeah. There's a whole thing going on right now, bro. I know. There's well, a, I, we were just talking about yeah. this. There's like this crazy hyper grace demonic teaching it's, talking about how you don't have to repent because it's a work. When and the Bible literally says repent, believe. Jesus said that. Repent yes. for the kingdom you know, of God, God is at hand. hand. Like, it's just demonic, bro. And so like this hyper grace doctrine dude it's all doctrines of devils because it's to actually incentivize you to fully live out in your flesh because exactly. because with hyper grace basically they teach no you don't need to turn away from sin like as long as you believe in jesus you're sealed that is a false teaching you're telling me that and they really believe this that you can go live like the world you know go uh you know be a murderer you know be a drunkard be a fornicator and still get into heaven they actually believe as long as you believed in jesus one time you could be a whole on satanist yeah. and still go to heaven it's such a demonic twisted teaching it, the bible says it's by grace through faith yes. the problem is, is i think i think those um hyper grace um sensationists they don't know what belief believing in faith is yeah faith is actually walking in belief look at abraham he was what? What was his faith? It was it was him going up to, do, to a land that God told him to go to. Yep. It was him doing the action, not just saying, "Okay, God, yeah, I believe that you have it for me." No, he got up and yes. did it. You faith, know what I'm faith, is, faith is the fruit of true belief. Yes. So, like us, yes, it's faith. It, it is, but faith means follow. Exactly. A disciple is a follower of Christ. There's a lot of Christians, but they don't follow. Right. They sit in the pews, but they don't follow Christ. Right. It's not about your church attendance. That doesn't save you. It's about you f truly following Jesus. Mm -hmm. And and I think I think the hyper grace people they don't want to follow. No. Because it call it, it actually they actually have to change. Right. So what they do is they justify. I believe in Jesus, but guess what? Muslims believe in Jesus. Right. That he's a prophet. Right. Buddhist, Christ conscious, bro. Like there's when I was in the the, the voodoo shops when I was like they said yes Jesus is real, but they had pictures of Jesus. Wow. In the Santeria stores, bro, like the actual warlock store, like the witchcraft stores, bro. They had they had they had they had the Catholic statues. Yeah. They had the rosaries. Mm -hmm. They even had the Book of Psalms. Wow. Yeah, because you know witches use the Book of Psalms to cast spells. Yes, bro. That's they, crazy. They, they literally will use it and. Because the brother, the, 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 the devil knows the scriptures. Look mm -hmm. at what Jesus in the in the in the in the, in the wilderness. Right, he was twisting it. He tw he, he was yeah. But if you throw yourself off this, you know this 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 tower right now, like he was quote, quoting Psalm songs. ninety one. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll take charge over you, man. Like, come on. Wow. He said it's written. I will not tempt the Lord. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. You see, because bro, it's 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 perversion. It's it, you need revelation by the Spirit. Yeah. That's what happens with a lot of the hyper grace Baptists. Like, it's like they don't have the revelation. No, they the don't. Holy Spirit has not illuminated the word to them so they can understand it. Right. You have to have an ear to hear yes. what the Spirit is saying. Yes. Not, not, not the letter kills, the Spirit brings life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, I was, um, I, I mean, I was, I was in New Orleans now trying to be trained up, but I saw Solange Knowles. Literally, this is where it was like it sealed the deal all, almost all the way. I'm in there getting trained up behind the register and the little warlocks, you know, like a uh, shrine, whatever. And then I see someone walk in and I'm looking, it's Solange Knowles. And I'm like, bro, wow. is this real? And she's walking in with her boyfriend. I'm like, this is a time where she was popping. Mm -hmm. This remember, remember there was a time where she blew up? Yeah. And like everyone was like, Yeah, that's crazy. And I'm like, I'm like, and I look at him and I, he's like just chilling. He's like, Hey, how you doing? How you been? And I'm yeah. like, and I'm and I played it cool. I didn't just like start wilding out. Like, you know, I'm just like, how you doing? And she's getting statues, getting herbs. Like wow. she's with her boyfriend, they're looking around, okay, we're gonna get this. Like they were, they were like reing up in Haiti. No, this is in New Orleans. Oh, in New Orleans, wow. They're reing up 
on their witchcraft. Yeah. And she comes to the, the register. She pays for it. And he's like, yeah, um, I want you to come back. Um, come back like on Tuesday, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna finish. Like she's like, okay, no problem. Good to see. You. Like, and I'm like, okay, maybe that's not Solange's nose. There's no way. Mm-hmm. She leaves, and I'm like, bro, was that Solange's nose? He was like, oh yeah. Her and her family come in here all the time. <laughs> Wow, and Christian still want to defend Beyonce, bro. It's sad. <laughs> they don't. Crazy. They don't really know what's going on. That's bro. crazy, bro. It's 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 there's a, there's a lot of people. I mean, you know this in Hollywood, bro. Like that are they know that the only way they can get power is through this, and they think yeah. that they think it's ancestral worship. Like they really believe like this is what my ancestors did, and and they say that Christianity is by is um is is the white man, the white yeah, man. Yeah, right, right. That's the big psyop, right? This whole this whole thing of worshiping your ancestors we know it's demonic but yep. okay let's say in another alternate false reality it wasn't demonic why would i still worship my ancestors i tell people all the time that's such a silly belief like you know god god bless my lineage before me but i'm not gonna worship them bro they didn't like leave me any land or anything like that you, you know me? what i'm saying yeah, like, you like you know we, we, my, my parents are lit they did i mean they're still alive <laughs> praise god my parents they they raised me well i don't know about the bloodline before it, bro i don't know like we, they, they they didn't get me no properties they didn't leave me no acres bro why am i gonna worship them but jesus christ he gave me everything bro like he supplies all our needs and so it just doesn't make sense it's silly it's silly to worship your ancestors because yeah. it's like, bro, what did they? Yeah, okay, maybe they they did what they got to do, but they didn't really like leave anything behind, bro. I'm not about to be worshiping them. It's, it's necromancy. It's necromancy, bro. And, and you know, and, when I was oh, sorry, I wanted to bring up this one thing, and I'm gonna let you continue. I used to play with the Ouija board. Uh, yes, when I was when I was younger, there's videos of it. I used to post vlogs about it, bro. I used to be what? into demonic, yeah, bro. I used to be into demonic stuff, bro. And I was playing the Ouija board, right? Wow. And this is how crazy the. This is how these ancestral spirits will manipulate you. So people don't understand, but we were talking about this earlier. Uh, demons in the spirit realm, they're monitoring spirits. So they study you when you're born. They study your family lineage. Mm. And I was, this is when my grandfather had just passed away. And I wanted to communicate with him, right, through the Ouija board. And um, I was on the Ouija board and people were telling me, yeah, like you do the, you're, you're this is where you can contact your dead relatives and stuff. Mm. And so... As I had my hand on the Ouija board piece, the demon was moving the the board, and I'm like, uh, like what's my what's my grandfather's name? And and it spelled his name, and I thought I was talking to my grandfather, and I was asking him questions. What did it like, feel like? W- like what if what feel like? Like when, when it was moving your hand? Yeah, no, it moved it on its own, bro. I wasn't moving it. Like I just let it, cause 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 when you're playing with the Ouija board in the spirit realm, a demon has their hand yeah, on of course. you, and it's moving the piece, and so. Um, this demon that I thought was my grandfather, uh, which, you know, at the end of the day, you can't contact your dead relatives. You can't. know what I'm saying? But I thought I could. I thought I was connecting with him in the underworld, right? Um, the demon was answering really deep family questions that nobody knew, you know, except for like my inner family. And so I legitimately thought I was talking to my grandfather. When I came to Christ, God was showing me there's things called monitoring spirits, Mm. right? Where they can study literally your whole life as soon as you're born and give you demonic words of knowledge, fake words of knowledge to make you think that you're actually talking to your ancestor. But you're not. You're talking to a demonic spirit. And, you know, I I had gone through similar stuff like that too with the whole ancestral spirit stuff. Like I know it's all demonic. I know it's all cap. It's all cap, bro. It's all cap, bro. Because like when you die, your soul's either going up or down, man. Yep. It's either heaven or hell. Yep. There's no purgatory. There's no, oh, let me pray this person to heaven. Like right. you're only saved by grace through right. faith in Jesus Christ and mm-hmm. what he did, the death, burial, and resurrection. And, re- and if you truly believe, you're going to return away. Mm-hmm. That's part of the process because that, that, that's the fruit yeah. of true faith. Right. And, and just and put your faith in him and follow him. Mm-hmm. By being a follower of Christ, it shows that you truly believe. Yeah. It's so easy, yes. For God loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believeth, mm-hmm. John three sixteen. But yes, if you believe, you're gonna follow. Right. So there's a lot of people who say, "I believe in Jesus," but do you believe He's your Lord and Savior? Right. Do you believe He's the Messiah? Right. Do you believe He came in the flesh, died, and was and was resurrected? Right. What do you believe? Yeah, because if you don't believe that, you believe in a, you actually believe in an idol. You believe actually in in a false god because yep. the only true God is Jesus Christ. Who came in the flesh Come on. and died and rose again and is coming back? Yes, for the, a bride without spot or blemish. That's why the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God and the salvation. Yeah, Christians need to preach the gospel. Yeah, if amen. we're not preaching the gospel, if the gospel is not in the forefront of every revival, of every mm-hmm. church. Like, bro, how are we going to save souls? Exactly. I think it's a lot of entertainment, and then yeah. also what we see, what we're seeing right now, a lot, is idol, idol, idolizing of the gifts. Yes. 
the gifts are beautiful. I move in the gifts. You know this. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, the gospel is, is, the, is the whole reason. The gospel is going to save you, not the gifts. Like yesterday with the waitress. Yeah, yeah. the gifts were moving to your testimony, my testimony, yeah. you were tag teaming. She was getting touched by God a whole, you know, she's a whole witch. Mm-hmm. But what happened? I had, eventually, the gospel, boom, boom, yes. boom, 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 boom. She got the gospel of the Jesus gospel Christ. The gospel is what transforms the heart. I didn't mean to get on a tangent about the Ouija board. I want to kind of reel it back how you were basically in New Orleans at yes. the Voodoo Shop, yes. right? And so this all leads to a part of your salvation story. Yes. So, so I guess we could kind of continue from there. I just wanted to bring up the Ouija board thing because like, I know exactly what you're talking about with the whole ancestors and everything. I went through the same crazy. thing. Crazy. You got videos and stuff. I have videos. I actually have videos of me. I mean, I, pri- I privated most of them. They're on my old YouTube channel that the Lord had me put away probably because of crap like that you know but um yeah like there's videos out there actually viral videos bro because back then youtube was blowing up ouija board videos they were getting millions of views so most of us were doing it because it was popping wow it's crazy bro the devil the devil will like recommend videos about witchcraft and demons and ouija boards but as soon as i was posting christian content it was suppressed yeah yeah, but now god is exalting this channel in jesus name and it's all him not me um, you were in New Orleans. So New Orleans, I, I'm, I see Solange knows now I'm thinking this is it. So I go back to Florida. Um, my, the girl I was dating that took me to Haiti actually got pregnant. You know, she's going through it. You know, I'm like, look, let's leave Cali because an earthquake actually happened. A small earthquake. She freaked out. Let's move back. Let's move back to Florida, close to Broward, but not mm-hmm. too close. So we moved to Jupiter Beach, Florida. Mm-hmm. That's when the, the father started really drawing on. So when I got there, I still got deep into witchcraft. I, I learned shamanism. Now I was learning how to balance chakras. I was getting into crystals. I had thousands of dollars worth of crystals, bro. That's why I see, I tell, I'm, I'm so against it because mm-hmm. it's idolatry. Yeah, it is. And the minute you use a crystal to protect you, you're, you're already allowing a demon legal right. But yep. so I'm, I'm, I'm burning sage. I have altars. I'm taking ritual herb baths. I mean, salt in corners. I mean, bro, I was doing it all. I mean, I was reading tarot. I was, I had my own tarot cards. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I'm training up. I'm like, bro, I'm about to be like the, like the man, like yeah. shaman, voodoo, like warlock, like everything, bro. Like I was already in it. I was already a warlock. Like I was already doing it. Yeah. I was doing it. I was, I was, I was teaching me. I was calling friends like, bro, it's, it's our ancestors. I was teaching my friends this, bro. Like, like they a were demonic evangelist. Yeah. I was a demonic evangelist. Wow. Literally, bro. And That's like, crazy. Yeah, bro. I was, t- I was like, yo, this is it. I was even telling my parents. Yeah. I was trying to, my, my what did your parents think? I remember my mom was like, no, like cause she's Catholic, but she didn't really understand. Yeah. My dad, thank God, he would always look at me and say, the blood of Jesus. Wow. And my dad at the time was smoking dope. Yeah. Like, I mean, he wasn't saved, bro. Yeah. He would always say, the blood of Jesus. Wow. The bl- and I, and, but he, he reminds me, he was like, don't you remember when you were telling me about all these, these Santeria gods? And I said, the blood of Jesus. And you started laughing at me. I was yeah. like, bro, I forgot. That's crazy. I would laugh at him and be like, come on, bro. Like, the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Like, He's like, and I always told you the blood of Jesus, bro. It's crazy. But and now he, he got saved because of your prayers when you got saved. That's so beautiful, man. Only him, bro. bro like, like, bro. Like, I, I, me and my dad were weeping like a baby. Dude, that's amazing. But um, yeah, bro. So like, I'm, I'm like, okay, like I'm gonna be a warlock. Like, all this stuff. The father starts sending people. Mm-hmm. So I'm in a liquor store trying to actually uh, negotiate with these Indian owners, and in, um, in PJ Palm Beach Gardens, which is a very rich area. That's that's where the the PJ tour is, and um. I'm trying to buy out half of it to um, have a wine bar. I'm trying to get out the dope game, bro. And that's when everything like really, um, really took off. The, the 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 Lord sent somebody into that liquor store to start telling me, "Hey, you have a light on you." His name was Richard, white guy, older, a lot of money. He just got saved. I mean, the man was probably worth over ten, twenty, thirty mil, maybe even more. Had more, he had a, he had a big real estate business, and he was just so loving. This is on Halloween, mm-hmm. and he was you know again baby Christian man. Just come to my house. We're having like a Halloween party type of thing, and you know just come over, man. Just come. I just got saved, and man, I, you have a light on you. He starts crying, bro, and yeah. I'm like, why is this guy? <laughs> and he invited me to he invited me to his house, and I'm like, okay, this is an opportunity. Maybe we could do some business. Mm-hmm. So me and my girl, we like all right, let's go. We go, man. There's all these these people like you know upper echelon like people like doctors lawyers politicians all these people in this big old house man on the water and i'm like okay let's let's see what's up i'm trying to have conversation with him he just he he, he left everybody to just mingle he didn't even care yeah and he just sat next to me just smiling like man like and and i'm just he's like come to my church and i'm like yeah yeah for sure i was like so and i'm like what are you doing with real estate yeah 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 uh, and he's like, and I'm like, okay. I told my girls like, let's leave, bro. These are swingers, bro. Yeah. Like him and his wife, they're swingers, yeah, bro. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. This man would not stop texting me. So yeah. as he's texting me, then 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 another guy like, like just starts just starts preaching to me about Jesus, bro. Like I remember, I'll never forget this. Actually, let me let me backtrack. I bought my first Bible because I went on YouTube. I was looking up chakra balancing, and I seen Torben Sandergaard from the Last Reformation. 
a video recommended popped up of him casting demons out of a, a Reiki healer. Mm -hmm. That led me to click on it and actually like, yo, like Christians have power. I freaked out. Yeah. That led me to his deliverance map or his, 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 his TLR map. Yeah. I hit up somebody from there and this lady named Sharon, four foot 10 white lady, man, like short, would just pray in the Holy Ghost, intercede. And then she'd be on the phone like, you can't fornicate, but I'm, I'm going to pray for you. And I'm like, no, it's about this. It's about my ancestral spirit. She's like, it's not, but I'm going to pray for you. And she would just keep praying. So I got Richard texting me, Sharon praying for me. That led me to say, you know what? Let me buy a Bible. Mm -hmm. Because she told me it's not about what well, you were raised in the Catholic, how you were raised in the Catholic Church. That's not it. That's not it. Mm -hmm. Like demons can, like demons can get casted out in Jesus' name. Like you people can be healed. I'm like people can be healed in Jesus. I was like, nah. so let me buy a Bible. So I buy it off Amazon. It gets in. First time I went outside by my my neighborhood by a lake to read the Bible, and I'm as as I'm about to open it, a guy walking his dog passes by, named John. Hey, what's that? I'm like, it's a Bible. He's a whole pastor. He's a Bible study teacher, like real deal, like Bible study teacher. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, like, he's like, let me just, let me sit down with you. He's like, open up the book of Romans. And I'm telling him about my stuff too, like about the voodoo. He's like, man, it's the name of Jesus. He's like, just use the name of Jesus. The demons have to go. Like they were so confident. I'm like, how are these people so confident, bro? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is weird. So I get back, bro. I start reading the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. It starts convicting me. Wow. I, like the this book is when of, you were still doing voodoo? Bro, I had, bro, as I'm reading the book of Romans, on, on, my, like, on my kitchen counter, there was an entire altar. Wow. I'm talking about multiple statues, Cherokee statues, Chango, um, Legba, like all these demonic spirits. It was Catholic statues that, yeah. had, that represented the demons. I, I mean, I had salt. I had, I had sage. I was still, I, bro, I had everything. I was wearing an evil eye the entire time I was reading the Bible with, um, wow. with, many, with many voodoo uh, beads on me, like yeah. the, the red and white, the, uh, the green and, and yellow, like mm. the... the, the if, they, if you know what I'm talking about, it's yeah. th those ancestral beads, which a lot of gangs use, but they don't mm -hmm. even know what's happening. But anyways, I'm reading the Bible, bro, and I'm feeling convicted, and I'm just like, man, I'm just feeling it. And I remember it was after like the second or third day. It was December 1st, 2019. I'm in my apartment, bro, and I was just like, I just came to that revelation. It's Jesus. He's God. It's Jesus. And I remember saying out like, it's Jesus. Like it just popped in your mind. Bro, it just like... <sighs> That's the same thing that happened to me, man. It was like, it was right there, but it wasn't like fully. But then there was a moment where it was like, it's Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus. And the minute I knew that Jesus Christ is Lord, like he's the highest power, like it's him. The minute oh, I- Oh, because you knew that was, sorry to interrupt you. You knew that was the question that you asked God. Like, who's like, the highest who the power? power in is? Greece, remember? So so how long ago was that, that uh, thing in Greece versus when you realized that Jesus was God? 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, was, it was about January, no, December 2017, all the way to December 1st, 2019. Mm -hmm. So two years later, bro. Did you make that connection when you realized it was Jesus that that was the answer to your question two yeah, years ago? It's like everything just hit like a bone. Wow. Bro, like everything just went, like it just came, like bro, like and that's when I, like I seen a light in the spirit, like a vision of a light, just like, and bro, like that's when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I got smacked to the ground, bro. Like literally like fell to the ground like an uncontrollable force of love. I start like the, those no, demonic negative feelings that were in me just start coming out of me. Like like literally I just knew they weren't supposed to be there. And I'm like, Bleh! like I'm on the floor, like bro, blacked out. Like I'm on the floor, like like yeah. I'm not there. Like, like it was like my body was doing all this, but I wasn't, I was, I was out of my body. And I'm, bro, I'm coughing up, spitting up, yeah. crying. And then, bro, real talk. Yeah. And I was like, you were praying in tongues. And I was like, I was like, what am I? But I had in my stomach, I was like, it feels so good. I was yeah. like, and it wasn't demonic tongues. I was yeah. like, but it was like I just wanted to speak in this unknown language. I didn't yeah. know why. I just felt so good. I was like, yeah. bro, and I just start. I just let it loose. Yeah, yeah. And I got up and I was like, it's Jesus. I felt the most overwhelming peace, bro. I felt like wow. I just felt like oh my god, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. It wasn't head knowledge. It yeah. wasn't. It was like. Bro, this is it. And I was like, oh my God, I called Sharon, Sharon, Sharon. Uh, and she was just like, okay, you got to get rid of every. Like, I was yeah. like, okay. I told him, and then my girl was at work and she comes home. And um, let me stop real quick. I just heard the Lord. Let me backtrack. Another one of the ways God's real, God reeled me in. I went to a barber in West Palm Beach whose name was Paul, who had Christian rap playing. Mm -hmm. And he, he, out, he invited me to his church, which I didn't go to. Mm -hmm. I eventually, after watching that YouTube video, went to Richard's church. When I went to Richard's church, walking in with him, 
Paul, who doesn't know Richard, was on the stage as the worship leader. Mm -hmm. So that was super coincidental. Yeah. And that's like that's that's what led me also to get to buy a Bible, mm -hmm. but I didn't believe yet. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, bro, fa like fast forward. So now I'm like, man, I got to burn everything. I take all the witchcraft items, put it in a bag. I told my the, my girl, look, we can't fornicate. We can't even sleep in the same bed. I'm sleeping in the room over there. On the ground, I don't care if there's no bed frame. I don't care if there's nothing in there. I'm sleeping in there. She's like, bro, I put her through so much, bro. Like, it was a new religion every day. I was, like, always accusing her again. Remember remember I told you the, yeah. per the paranoia? You cheated on me. That's, bro, I was, I was like, like, I got to cut you off. And she was like, I'm not your girl. I'm pregnant with your child. F you, Rich. I'm done with you. I was like, look, I had so much peace. I was like, I understand, you know, you have all the right to leave, but I'm going to, I just want to do the right thing. Yeah. She's just like, yo, like she knew something changed. She yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What's wrong with this dude? Like, yeah. You know, I was addicted to sex, bro. Like mm -hmm. I needed to have sex all the time. Like yeah. I had all these girls. So she was like, this guy's crazy. But yeah. I was like, okay, we're going to go burn everything. She came, bro. We went to the middle of, the, of, of uh, uh, behind our, the neighborhood in Jupiter Beach, the wildlife preserve, which not, we were not supposed to go to, but we went. Yeah. I started a bonfire. I remember I had all camo on, bro. Like I went to Walmart, bought a whole camo outfit. Like I had all the woods. Like I was like, we going all out. I brought my gun, a machete. Like I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I was just like so teed up and zealous. Mm -hmm. Burned everything, bro. Like I remember we, we remember seeing shadows, hearing pops, hearing noises, like. Bro, it was scary. I'm not gonna wow. front. It was it was actually scary. It was like demons like kind of following you. Yeah, and and it got broken because we we burned the idols. We didn't even know that it was in the book of Acts, bro. Like yeah. in the book of Acts when all the They people, did the same thing, yeah. We didn't know that. Like wow. we just we just were like I just feel led to like thank you Jesus. We just felt led. That's how you know we, I received the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And because the Holy Ghost will always confirm the word. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we come back, bro. That's when I was like, look, like I need to pray, like I need to separate myself. That was the first that first night. Was that I had the most overwhelming feeling to watch porn. Mm -hmm. I was addicted to porn since the age of twelve, bro. Mm -hmm. Like maybe even earlier. Yeah. And sex, like bro, five girls sometimes in a day. Like yeah. always, new woman, Tinder, yeah. bro, plenty of fish, like Bumble, like bro. I was a professional in person on the internet. Like um, I had, I needed the girls. Yes. Yeah, I was like, I'm done, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm done. So I, I remember laying in my bed and that little on the ground. I'm just like, I felt I was started shaking, and I felt the most overwhelming feeling to watch porn. I was like, like I started crying. And I saw I saw two shadows mm -hmm. right next to my bed, these long shadows. And I remember getting scared out of my mind, bro. Like, yeah. And I didn't know what to do, but I remember that guy John telling me just use the name of Jesus. So I said, Jesus, like that. Yeah. And bro, I knocked out. Wow. <laughs> Went to sleep. Woke up the next day. That feeling of lust in my stomach mm -hmm. was completely gone. Wow. Since since I was since I've been born again by the grace of God, I have not watched porn once, bro. By wow. the grace, and I was a whore. Yeah, I've not cheated on my wife once. I've not even talked to another you guy. Just quit cold turkey, bro. By the grace of God, he Amen, it, was, it was for his glory. Amen. It was it was for, like so like then I was like okay I'm staying I'm staying celibate. I was like I'm with it till I get married. I yeah. told my girl I was like look you're not my girlfriend no more. We're brother. I'm your brother in Christ, but you got to get saved. You're not <laughs> yeah, saved. Yeah, yeah. I was like look I'm looking for apartments. I got to get out of here. Yeah, like, I got to get out. And like she was just this is during COVID. She's yeah. like, like this was right right in the beginning of COVID. She's like, what is it? Oh, my son is gonna grow up without a dad. I'm like, no, I'm gonna be in his life. Yeah. I was like, I love I'm I'm gonna take care of that kid. But you know, bro, two weeks later, she had an encounter with two demons. Yeah. One shape shifted into the image of me. Came to her bed and I'm I'm sleeping in another yeah. room and tried to have sex with her. And she said she in the spirit saw the demon. It looked just like me, but then she said it made a smile. Yeah. And she knew. So she and I remember she screamed. She's pregnant. With my, she's pregnant with R three, my son, my yeah. first child, Richard, Richard the third. I ran. Whew, I yeah. She was like, <laughs> like, like I saw, a I saw something that looked like you. Like she didn't know what it was. I was yeah. like, I was like, what? That was a demon. Yeah. I was like, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Yeah. The name of Jesus. Like I, I thought yeah. I knew how to do. Like yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, know about yeah. binding, rebuking. I was yeah. like, the name of Jesus. The name of I was scared too, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and bro, but that led her to to listen to what I said. Read the Book of Romans. Mm -hmm. So. I didn't know this. She started reading the book of Romans. Yeah. As she's reading and she gives her testimony to the Lord gave her a complete, took her into an open vision of Jesus Christ on the cross. Wow. She got convicted and realized she was a sinner and she needed saving. Literally gave her life to Christ, came to me weeping like I just received the Holy Spirit. Wow. I was still paranoid and needed deliverance and breaking from strongholds. I didn't believe her. So I was like, you know what? If you did. Let's get deliverance. We drove all we drove all the way to Broward. We went to a deliverance minister named Mark from Invicta Ministry. Shout out to Mark. Mm -hmm. Love that dude. He's a powerful deliverance, technical deliverance. Like he does yeah. like one-on-ones. And bro, I remember we walked in there to an open session he had. Bro, he started he had a word of knowledge. You have a Ganesh tattoo on your back. Like, bro, I was That's like crazy. I was like, 
and your father sexually abused you. And she's like, crying. Yeah. She, she goes, come out. And like, she's ah, like, with this, my child and this stuff, breaking curses off of my child, praying, praying, praying. Bro, like, broke so much off and like, anointed her tattoos with oil. Like, wow. bro, like, she took off her piercings, like, everything. And I'm like, can I be real? I started laughing, bro. Yeah. I was like, this is fake. Yeah. And then afterwards, we're in the car and I'm like, you paid him. Mm-hmm. You called him and you told him about everything you had. There's no way. Yeah. She was, she, this is the first time she was like, Rich, I don't care. I have so much peace right now. And I was like, I called him like, I want one-on-one. Yeah. And you know, the, I'm not I'm not knocking anybody for what they do. He mm-hmm. charged, he, for the one-on, he, does, he has like free open sessions, but yeah. he charges for one-on-one. Mm-hmm. I didn't care at the time. I was like, I'll pay the, the you know, the $400. Like, yeah. I'll pay. So we had a one-on-one session. I had to fill out this form, and he went down the line. I, de- I remember when he was praying for me. I'm saved already, filled with the Holy Spirit. A demon manifested in me mm. and started saying, I'm going to take care of him in hell, like cursing him out. And he started casting the demon out. I remember being there but not being there. And, bro, I started spitting up blood. Wow. I, into, the, into a trash can. I was getting delivered. He, mm. bro, he casted so many demons out of me. And I remember feeling even more peace, bro, like... Like, I was like, bro, like, this is it. Like, yeah. this is it, it. Like, oh, my God. Like, I was like, yo, I'm so, like, I felt so much more freedom. Mm-hmm. He's prophesied over me about music. He prophesied over me about being a revivalist, all yeah. these things. And then, bro, Which like. It all came to pass. It did, bro. I actually yeah. went back and honored the man of God. And, like, like he, he sees me on YouTube. He's like, wow. Like, yeah. you actually, like, God is good. I edified his church. Mm-hmm. Anyways, bro, like, that's what started everything. Um. And then, bro, like, I just got lit up on fire. I started watching people like David Lynn, Marcus Rogers, like, yeah. people like the first, like, I was like, okay, who's popping on YouTube? And, like, I'm going to go do this. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and this is when the one-on-one evangelism started. Mm-hmm. I went to the streets alone. You know, I didn't see too many, I didn't see anybody doing one-on-ones. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was like, I feel like that's my call. Like, I was like, I feel like I want to do that. I didn't yeah. know what a calling was. I didn't know what to get, bro, I hadn't, I hadn't been the word, but I just went out to anywhere I could. And I would, and this is during COVID, when no, when no one was going out. And I would just tell people about my testimony, and that is Jesus Christ. And, bro, people would be breaking down, crying in Home Depots, Walmarts. Like, I'd be praying over them, like, God, just, like, I just blessed them. Like, I didn't know what to do. And, like, yeah. bro, people were getting, like, bro, like, we're getting delivered, like, and getting touched by God and, like, coming to, like, wanting to come to our house to do Bible. Like, bro, I was saving souls, not even knowing that, you know, what I'm supposed to do. Like, yeah. I just was so, like, it's Jesus. I got to tell everybody. Like, my wife thought I was crazy because yeah, she wasn't yeah, baptized yeah. in the Holy Ghost yet. Yeah. She was like, yo, like, she was considering leaving me, bro. Um, it's wow. actually a powerful testimony. Like, like she uh, she got baptized in the Holy Spirit in the kitchen of our apartment two months later. So some people don't get baptized in the Holy Spirit till later. Yeah. Like in the Book of Acts, some people get baptized before water baptism. So if you don't if you don't speak in tongues, if you don't have a baptism of the Holy Ghost yet, you can get it. Just got just ask God and, and seek because yeah. she had to seek. Bro, when she got baptized in the Holy Ghost, she was on fire too. Like now we're just like lit up on fire. We're part of the Last Reformation TLR. It's a powerful ministry, house church. We're learning how to do the house church thing. Then we got we transitioned to another powerful church ministry, like church building. Yeah. Um, with a, with a, with a powerful man of God named Daniel Adams, like, mm-hmm. and then that's where we learned the church thing. Because, bro, I'm casting out demons in the streets, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing house visits. I didn't know that people come to a church to go to an altar to get delivered. I was like, yeah. this is easy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that's where I learned that. And then that's when we we separated from that ministry just on disagreements. Mm-hmm. And, bro, we just um we started uh, what's called uh. It was called First Love, mm-hmm. which is now the Remnant Revival Outreach Center. Which is your church now. Yes, sir. In Popka, Florida. In Popka, Florida. We you started guys off, live there. Go check it out. Amen. Yeah. We started off in my house with, I think, I'll say anywhere from 15 to 20 people. A Bible study mm-hmm. when we separated from that ministry, bro. Within the first, like, two months, I mean, bro, the, there was over 100 people. Wow. Because deliverance was breaking out. Healings were breaking out. Miracle signs and wonders. And people were coming from all over Orlando, even from out of the... Bro, people were coming from out of the state even back then. Wow. So, yeah, people were driving in. And then, bro, like, that's when um we had to get a building. We actually almost got evicted. But but God has saved that. We got a church building. We went to a few different buildings. Now we're in Apopka and um, a beautiful... Pay- you know, sanctuary, faith and power, worship center, Apostle Shaw, um, with uh, faith and power, powerful man of God. Yeah. And bro, just so much grace. And now, bro, um, the Lord has exalted it. You know, we have yeah. we, over that from that from the house church to, you know, about now, you know, a year and a half. I had to train up leaders. Mm-hmm. You know, the people that were broken, and you know, me and my wife, we trained them up. We pastored them. We loved them. We discipled them. We held them accountable. You know, we were also held accountable mm-hmm. to mentors and leaders. We actually got ordained pastors out here in Dallas. Um, by a powerful man of God named Pastor Robert Summers, whom you know. Yeah, I met him, uh, yeah. Out of Mountain Creeks. You know, he's a powerful man of God. You know, I have a I have a lot of men of God and women of God who speak into my life that have a lot of experience. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to to um, you know, you know, to Pastor Roberts, man. I love you, man. God bless you. Um, but yeah, man, this is that that's what's that that's what like made it, you know, 
official, yeah. you know, and, and bro, like now we're just, God is exalting it. And it was, he used the digital spaces, you know, the one-on-one evangelisms that people see, we've been doing it like yeah. before video, like the video, the video just actually was like, it took a lot. Yeah. We had to learn, bro, like how to vlog, how to edit. Like, mm-hmm. like it wasn't me and Kev, it was just me and Kev. Yeah. It was me and Kev alone. Like, okay, let's, we, we, with faith and God actually, before we even started, God took me into a vision and showed me what we had to do. And that how he, he said, I was going to, he said, I'm going to make you a household name. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what that meant. And so I prayed some more and God showed me, to, you know, I want you to do videos Yeah, and it's coming to pass. I mean, it's I been, mean, if you're in the Christian community, you know who Richard Lorenzo <laughs> is now. So yeah, that came to pass as well. Man, God is good. Yeah, Hallelujah. man. And, um, and bro, yeah, like now it's been about, uh, we, we started in July of last year. Mm-hmm. We're in August. So about, you know, t- uh, 13 months. Yeah. It's been, we've been doing it, man. And we went from like, bro, no YouTube. Like, I think we started YouTube bro, seven. You came up quick. Bro, we started like, YouTube. Out like, of all the people, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. out of all the people, bro, who've been doing ministry content, your come up was the quickest. Amen. And it's, I mean, that's just, that's just a start for what's really about to come. You know what's crazy, bro? And I used to watch your videos before you really came up or blew up like that. I was always like, bro, how is this guy not more viral? But it's just because wow. there's timings for everything, right? It's like you always had the element to it, the, the viral aspect to it, but it wasn't time yet. Ooh, God knows when it's time to exalt a ministry. Because if it gets exalted too early, that can actually sabotage the destiny of the ministry. Amen. Because certain things need to be learned first, right? I mean, none of us are perfect. This is an amazing man of God. You know, I, I do my thing online. I try to preach the word. Powerful man of God. Amen, amen. Thank you, bro. Um, but... None of us are perfect. Come There's on. still stuff that God needs to teach us, set us free from, deliver us from. Yes. You know, and so if God exalts a ministry too early, but you're not delivered from certain things, if or I'm... you have an unlearned strongholds that demons have tried to put in your brain about how you think you should operate, the ministry is going to get sabotaged. Come and on. the ministry is our baby. Yes. That's our baby. We got to take care of it. So God wants to train us as... Uh, fathers who are going to be able to steward that baby and raise it and nurture it in the way that it should go. That's powerful. And Amen. It's, it, it, you know how you know the difference between God, God's exaltation, and the devil's. Mm-hmm. People who get exalted by the devil mm-hmm. and, and even that claim to be Christians, yeah, they have no relationship with God. None. You talk to them, they don't pray, they don't read, they don't, they don't, they they're drinking, they're smoking. Like this is how you know if the devil's exalted somebody. Yeah. Behind the scenes, you know they're worldly. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, and it might be somebody watching right now. Look. The Lord's calling you to repentance. Just because your your YouTube, TikTok, Facebook is taking off, it doesn't matter. Like, what are your fruit? Like, right. like what's behind? Like, numbers do mean something. They do because your numbers is influence. There's yeah. actually an, an anointing of influence that comes upon people when God exalts exactly, you. Exactly, yeah. and that's what you're talking about. Like, that's that's what God did. He, yeah, you know, what I'm saying like God took took us off like six months. I think it would have been six or seven months on YouTube or something yeah. like that. So, like, bro, like. It's it's amazing, bro. Yeah. Like what God's doing. I think what, how long has it been? I think it's been like six, seven months, right? Yeah, and you gained like what two hundred and forty k subs in like six months or something. Yeah, bro. Bro, for a Christian content, that's nuts. That's not bro. even normal, right? Yeah, that's not normal. Yeah, I shout out to Kevin Berean, like you know, yeah. behind the scenes editing and like because like bro, like God set it up. He couldn't ex- exalt the channels. Yeah. Until the leadership was ready, mm-hmm. because bro, now what we see at the Rock, bro, it's crazy. People coming yeah. from all over the world. Bro. Yeah, now it's packed too. It's packed. I remember I I pulled up. I actually spoke at your church like a year ago, December two thousand and twenty two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was there was a good amount of people there but it was nowhere near as packed as it is now yeah so now just seeing that in the past year bro how that that ministry has really grown bro i'm just like man i was really i could probably say like i was here from the beginning bro you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah, you, <laughs> so, you, you actually were yeah, yeah you, amen, you, you amen. saw it like when we had the, the revival and there's maybe like three or four hundred people yeah now bro like a tuesday service is like how the revival was now we see like bro like 500 plus yeah. like coming and bro the revivals we're having in Houston the, in Dallas the one in Houston was over 2000 yeah the one that we're doing that we're going to be having now tomorrow mm-hmm. 3200 yeah that's a lot and it's going to just increase the Lord showed us, showed, showed us visions of stadiums yeah and, it's all for his glory. He had to break me, bro. He had to break us. He had to break my wife. He had to break the church because we had to get delivered and healed of a lot of, and I, you know this, I talk to you about it all the time. We had to get delivered from the spirit of rejection. Yeah, that's a big thing that's plaguing the body of Christ is the spirit of rejection. You put me onto this actually because the Lord used you to reveal that to me. And Amen. so a lot of people think that rejection is just a feeling, but it's so much more. It's actually, rejection is actually a stronghold of a fallen angel because mm. rejection, well, think about it, bro, right? Like, 
the fallen angels, they're the ones that are really putting on the strongholds that are plaguing society. Mm. And rejection is one of them. And so rejection gives birth to all types of sin because rejection allows your brain to be stunned and to receive lies from demons as truth. And when you do that, you've completely fallen into Satan's trap. It's, uh, and, and once we get delivered from the spirit, there needs to be healing. Like mm -hmm. the, uh, John Eckhart's book, it says destroying the spirit of rejection at the bottom. It says like a, a journey of healing. Yeah. And healing isn't... So like we got delivered from the spirit. I remember I actually had a one-on-one -on -one encounter with that demon. Mm -hmm. I actually seen it in the physical. And then um, after we got delivered, we had to get he I had to get healed, bro. I had to go back to my past. Like the Lord had to take me in dreams and visions and show me like, remember this, remember that, remember the bullying here, maybe, maybe your dad doing this. Remember the, like, bro, like I went through some deep stuff, bro. Like yeah. being bullied at, you know, 10, like being picked on, like girls, like just, you know, cheating on me in the yeah. world, like, like, like just leaving me friends backstabbing me, bro. Yeah. Like, like, bro, I went through some deep rejection and guess what? I'm not the only one. Yeah. Bro, I, I, everybody has. Everybody, yeah. That's like, what well, I think it's the most prominent spirit. I think, like you said, it's the gatekeeping spirit. Like, it allows everything else in. If yeah. the devil can hit you with rejection at the womb, mm -hmm. with, with, by your mom not wanting you, yeah, it's legal right. The Literally. minute your mom's like, I don't want this baby because the father's cheating, yeah, which, which is, um, I'm not going to say it, but happens to a lot of um kids with their parents, yeah. that's, that's, that's when it comes in, bro. Yeah. And that spirit of rejection, it, it, it shifts you, dog. Yep. Yep. I remember in seventh grade just being like, just having no friends yeah straight up like I, I sixth grade i had more friends seventh grade i don't know like it's like that spirit manifest oh i had no friends in uh same thing and like bro that's crazy i think i was in seventh grade and i was eating lunch alone in middle school me too those i was those... eating those bosco sticks with the marinara sauce <laughs> bro that's that's when it all hit me yeah in seventh grade i would be alone eating lunch yeah and I, i'd be alone in the hallways it felt so it felt so like and, you know, so we were talking about this earlier, but rejection, like that demon likes to stay in the stomach when it's getting casted out of people. And when you're feeling rejected in real time, you will feel that in your stomach. And so I remember eating lunch alone in middle school uh, at seventh grade, eating, and I used to get these things called Bosco sticks. So uh, in the Midwest where I'm from in Chicago, that was like a big thing at the school lunches. It was like these... Uh, um, breadsticks with mozzarella in it and marinara sauce and this was like my favorite thing to eat at school but i remember eating oh, the bosco i remember those you remember that yeah yeah bro, bro the bosco sticks that's crazy and so man i was munching on them bosco sticks but i was sitting alone when everyone else had their clicks they're, they're little groups. clicking friends yeah yeah and i just remember like i'm supposed to enjoy these bosco sticks but i just feel this pit Torment. in my stomach of rejection because i'm like number one i look like a loser because i'm sitting alone number two like is this what my life has become is does no one rock with me like that? Bro. And I'm like, yo, these Bosco sticks aren't even hitting the same. And that's because I was feeling rejected. And that's what that demon likes to do. It creates that pit in your stomach. Yeah, and that's bro. why we see in deliverance sessions when that demon is getting casted out, it comes out through it the comes stomach. Out. <laughs> yep. and it, bro, I'm going to say something I don't think I've ever said in a podcast, which is um, the Lord just told me to release this. I used to lie, bro, since, this, the, since seventh grade and tell people I wasn't a virgin. Mm-hmm. And that I had sex. I used to lie, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't lose my virginity until I think it was, uh, I think it was my junior year, bro. Yeah. So I'm like ninth, tenth, eleventh. All my friends are getting girls, mm -hmm. like smashing girls, like mm -hmm. all this stuff, like lying, like, yeah. oh yeah, I, I lost my virginity here. I slept with it. Uh, this girl from another school, and bro, I remember my friends like, like being like, man, we never see like, bro. I was, I felt lame. Like yeah. I remember I was, uh, bro. I was, um, I, I was really skinny. I was like 150 pounds. Like six foot one. Yeah. And I, I I played ball. I had friends, but like I wasn't popular. Like I yeah. wasn't known. So like at a, in eleventh grade, I remember um I had lost my virginity. Right, it was so terrible. I lost my virginity while my friend was playing video games. Uh, on, on like in, in my house, bro. It's so so sad. I snuck a girl in. He's playing video games on the bed and I'm like over there smashing a girl. That's how I lost my virginity to a random girl. Yeah. And I remember like being like, Okay, it's on. Like I'm gonna like it's like I had revenge. Yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you this, man, this is crazy. This is for somebody. Before that, when I was fourteen, I almost lost my virginity to a girl. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be transparent with you. I tried to I tried like <laughs> sad. It was two girls, it was me and my boy. He was having sex with her next to me. And I remember trying to have sex with the girl and I remember putting the I'm gonna be real. Like, if if you want to take it out, you can take it off. Putting the condom on and like literally finishing, like being done and being like, man, like, and I couldn't get it back up. Mm -hmm. I couldn't like, and I remember the girl just waiting, and I'm like, I went to the bathroom. I'm like, bro, what's wrong? I watch yeah. porn all the time, and bro, I, the Lord told me later it was my grandma's grandmother's prayers, because bro, wow. I lost my virginity when my grandma died. Wow. When she died as a junior, 
that's when everything shifted. That's when I, I got the girl. The girl started flocking to me. Yeah. Like that's when I, she was your covering in the spirit. She was my covering, dog. dude. That's why, like, for all the people watching, the praying grandmas, the praying moms, the praying dads, keep praying for your kids. It means a lot. The reason why they're still alive is because of your prayers. Yes. With my family, bro, I'm always covering them. I'm interceding for them. Lord, save them. Amen. And and I know that they're still here on this earth. All my family, bro. Yeah. Even my grandma. Who you know she's she's in her eighties now, and she's like one of the longest living um, family members in her entire lineage. Wow! You know because everybody everybody in my in my grandparents' family like they died early, like either before eighty or right after eighty. My grandma is like in her eighties, going strong, strong, and I, I'm praying for her. Come on! I love my grandma. I've been praying for her too. Amen. She's on my list. Grandma, if you're watching this, actually, I'll try to send this to her, clip it up. I love you, Grandma. <laughs> yeah, I'm praying for you, Grandma, too. Yeah, amen. <laughs> so, yeah, man, like, I, I lied my whole life. And, like, bro, that caused a lot of rejection because what I, what I felt like when I lost it, it was like, I got to catch up. Mm -hmm. So now I was like, this girl, this girl. I was like, always like, I got to have sex with this girl. Like, and, bro, like, that's when the sidekick came out. That's when AIM was popping. Like, I was like, bro, I'm going to, I was like, caking. Like, I, I, everything shifted. I quit the basketball team. I was like, forget basketball. I want girls. I started, I was like, I'm going to prove myself to my mm -hmm. friends. I'm going to start robbing these houses. I'm going to start, bro, I went crazy my yeah. junior year. That's when I, because I was the entire, it wasn't, bro, I wasn't robbing houses because you were I 17? 17. It's crazy. That's just, same thing that happened to me too. Not only did I lose my virginity at seventeen, that's when I started getting into drugs, started yeah. getting into drinking, started getting into weed. Yeah. After seventeen, bro, something shifted because I used to be this like goody two shoes kid. Me too. You know, like I was a nerd in school. I got good grades. I obeyed my parents. I was disciplined. And then when I was seventeen, bro, everything changed. Everything shifted. Everything shifted, bro. That's wow. because that's what, so what the devil did with us. And this is what the Lord showed me is like obviously it's it's the rejection. Yeah. He, he like tormented us it's kind of like like conditioned us like torment 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 look at all your friends mm -hmm. torment 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 okay they've been tormented enough it's time 17 That's now crazy. now we're like oh man like yeah i'm the man people like me like yeah. girls like i could smack like, like and yeah. I, had, I had this revenge bro like um you ever, you ever heard about that guy ian connor's revenge no ian connor it's a guy on, on, on instagram but he's a worldly super worldly he would Playboy Cardi in them, but anyways, I had like I had that revenge, bro. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get back. So like I like, I would just dog girls out, yeah. bro. Like I like I'm gonna smash you and your friend. Like mm -hmm. like I like I would like like I'm gonna I'm gonna sell drugs. I'm gonna do this because I'm the man. Like all my friends that were popular, mm -hmm. that were popping, like yeah. bro, like super popular, were now like yo rich, like because yeah. I'd be like, bro, you can't rob this store like this. I'm gonna go hit this lick and stick this person up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't do like they'd be scared, and I yeah. and I, I feel like I'm more powerful. Like mm -hmm. you can't like I had bro, I have faith and yeah. like and I would never get caught. Yeah, and I and I'm going to college so like wow yeah bro like it was it was that's where everything stemmed from was rejection yeah it was rejection bro mm -hmm. and i wish that um i mean i don't i mean it is what it is god knew it was gonna happen i wish i knew jesus earlier i wish i did too bro that but, love that you power know, at least we know him now come on i think about these times in the past bro in my past where like when I when I spiraled into degeneracy around the age of seventeen, like I just was put in deeper sorrow. And I wish, man, I wish I knew that I wish I had the foreknowledge of Jesus, at least growing up. I wish it was at least taught to me so I knew that there was something to go back to. Come on. I had to learn all of this stuff about Jesus on my own. Because nobody wow. nobody raised me that way. My parents they did the best that they could. And my parents are amazing parents. I mean, for secular non Christian parents, they did a great job. But you can do a great job and still not know Jesus and like have that sorrow in your heart. Yeah. And I was just trying to fill that that sorrow with stuff. When I was seventeen, I moved to L.A. You know, I mean, if we're gonna be transparent here, you know, I guess I never share this, but I lost my virginity to some girl. She was an adult film star. She actually died a couple years later, role playing with her boyfriend, and they had a loaded gun, and he accidentally shot her, and she died. Bro, I think I heard about that in Florida. Yeah. 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 Wow. And I never, I never shared this with anybody, but now that you're being real, I'm, I might as well. Um, and so uh, to, a, to a porn star. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I remember after that night at at 17 when I lost my virginity to that girl, I felt like you were saying charged up, like, oh, I'm, I'm the man now. I can do anything. I'm blowing up. I'm getting a bunch of likes. I just lost my virginity. I'm no longer the nerd from school. I'm Big Nick. I'm odd. You know, I'd say Big Nick, but that was my mentality. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then ever since then, that's when I got into drugs stuff. And so it was like that soul tie almost, like that that demon. When 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 you have 
intercourse, people don't know this. When you have intercourse, you're creating a soul tie with somebody. Yes. And if that person isn't delivered from demons, which an tra- adult film star has a lot of demons, if that if that person is not delivered from demons, all those demons go right. into your soul. People say that soul ties aren't biblical, but I would beg to defer because the Bible says that when you're with when a man a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife and they will be one flesh. Yep. But it's two it's two spirits in a body, in a physical human vessel, right? So uh, we have a flesh and we have a, a spirit man dwelling in our flesh. So if you're one flesh, you're also one with their soul yep. because the soul is in the physical body. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if you're fornicating, if you're in the world, you are tying your soul with that person if that person is isn't delivered of demons you are going to deal with the same demons that they're dealing with there was another time where there was this girl in the world and I, i'm only sharing the story not to glory uh not not to glorify sin or anything but to show you that soul ties are real right there was this girl she was a i think she was puerto rican actually light-skinned latina girl crazy this girl was a psychopath <laughs> i'm not even kidding but th- these jezebels were attracted to me back yeah. in the day because low-key like i you know i was i was it was it was insecure right and so i would get really like you know fine girls come around but they were psychos and i'm like why can't i just get a normal girl you know like but it was because these jezebels bro they were always around me at one point trying to ahab you out yeah because because they could smell the influence mm-hmm. and they and they wanted to ahab me but i still never let them ahab me because i was also into this like demonic real social dynamics teaching where it was about like manipulating girls and stuff so like you know i was like pl- it was demonic but i was playing the long game i'm like i'm gonna let them think they're manipulating me but in reality i'm gonna do it to them like it was just, just demonic crap anyways I don't know why I share that. In case anyone's in the Red Pill movement, get out of that. That's a demonic movement that I was in before it was called Red Pill. So this girl, um, she comes over, right? And uh, it was actually – I was at a party um, at the FaZe house in Los Angeles. Crazy. That same house that I partied in where I met that girl and brought her back to my crib, the house next to it is where I got saved a couple years later. Wow. Crazy, bro. The same the same area and where I partied and, you know, brought girls home to fornicate. I got saved at the house next to it, bro. Like God is so strategic. Anyways, so, you know, and I I was feeling like the man this day. I like shot a music video for this old worldly song called Gas Up that I made shooting a music video. Um this guy's like, "Hey, you want to hit this, you know, function?" And I'm like, "Yeah, let's get it, bro." Anyways, I go there. I bring some girls from the music video shoot. I'm looking like the man. I'm pulling up with like you know, three different girls, and this Jezebel girl, I didn't even pay attention to her. I didn't know she was there. She's she's eyeing me, like, jealous that these other girls are are, with are you. around, you know? And um, I didn't go up to her or talk to her or anything. Like, I didn't even know she existed. So I just go home, and, you know, in, in L.A., the culture is like you would go out to basically, you know, smash, obviously. Yeah. Um, and if you didn't, you would feel like a failure or disappointment. And so I had that spirit of rejection, like, ministering oh. to me like oh you loser like you were le- you were the man at the at this party and you didn't bring anyone home and i was like angry right that was my mentality back in the day mm. like if i didn't bring a girl home satan would like call me a loser and i would think i was a loser you know like it's so mm. twisted bro anyways my my friend at the time he calls me and he's like is your apartment still open and i'm like yeah and um He's like, okay, well, uh, stay there because I'm bringing two girls back. And I'm like, oh, bro, I hope they're not. Like, in my mind, I'm like, I hope they're not ugly, bro. <laughs> like, for real. That's how I was thinking in the world. Like, I don't think that way in Christ. Everybody is a daughter of, of the Lord if they come to repentance. But back then, I was like, oh, bro, I hope I hope these aren't ugly chicks because he had a reputation for that. You know, he brings two girls over. One of them was, like, really ugly. The other was super fine. Mm-hmm. And um, anyways, so I ended up talking to the girl that was really fine. And, you know, we were fornicating and whatnot. This was actually the same night that I talked about a testimony of my heart, like, beating out of my chest because I was also on Addy and I was drunk and I had just fornicated with this girl. So my heart felt like it was going to explode and I legit thought I was going to die that night. Mm. That's a whole nother story. I actually shared that testimony a while ago. You guys can go watch it on my TikTok. I'm, like, sitting on a tree log. I didn't go into detail about, where, like, how that story originated, but you'll get it on the pod. Anyways, uh. that girl was a psychopath. This is what I'm trying to get to. Um, like I remember being in her car one day and, you know, I didn't have a license. I didn't, I didn't drive. So she was driving and I'm in the passenger seat and it's all scratch. And I'm like, what is that? She's like, oh yeah, that was just my last relationship. I'm like, what the what? heck? And like, we're on our way to go get like Hennessy at the gas station. You know what I'm saying? Cause we, we had started hanging out regularly yeah. and like fornicating regularly. And I'm thinking like, bro, I, like I just struck gold. Like this girl is super bad, you know? Um, 
Anyways, we're fornicating. She phases out of my life. She does some crazy stuff, scratches my face, bro. She was a Jezebel. Like, anyways, kicked her out of the crib. Never saw her again. Bro, a week or two later, I started hearing spirits of murder tell me, go kill this guy. I'm like, what the heck? But then I was like, but then the spirits of murder were like, no, like, if you, if you kill this person, it's going to make you feel better. It's going to make, it's going to, it's going to relieve the pain. This, keep in mind, this was after I was fornicating with this psychopathic woman from Puerto oh Rico. Oh my gosh. And, and for the first time in my life, I'm having murderous thoughts. And, 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 and then I'm getting like, you know how you get an open vision from the Lord when you're praying or in worship? I'm getting open visions from the devil of me murdering somebody, carrying it out in detail to the point where like Satan is giving me these open visions and then he's using the spirit of rejection to make me lust over me murdering somebody in the open vision that i'm looking at it was wicked bro all because i started fornicating with this girl who was a psychopath Man. so soul ties are a hundred percent real because i was never that dark and that twisted before so people want to act like the whole reason why i brought this up was not to glory in my flesh or glory in my sin but to show you guys that soul ties are real yeah. and, I, and and it started getting darker bro when i started fornicating that's why fornication is such a big offense Mm. You know the Bible says that fornication is the only sin that you commit against your yeah, own body. I just preached on it, yeah. You know, and you're really committing sin against your body because you're allowing demons in your body by fornicating. Yeah. It's a big thing, bro. You can't be in Christ and be sleeping around. Like I used to think Christians were so stupid for wait wait until marriage. Now I understand. Bro, Christians knew what was up. Yeah. Soul man. ties are real. Stay you so don't want to be intertwining your soul with somebody who hasn't been delivered to demons. Come on. Because that could be the very thing that takes you to hell and you don't even know it. Come on, man. I just wanted to go on that table. That was good, man. People don't believe in soul ties, man. It's real, bro. You know, I get it persecuted by the Pharisees. Oh, brother, please show me where soul ties are in the Bible. Bro, I'll show you where it is in my real life and in the Bible. Come on, man. <laughs> I'll give you that double it's, confirmation. It's the revelation by the Spirit. Yeah, bro. Even the word Bible is not in the Bible. You know Exactly. What I'm the word rapture isn't in the Bible. Yeah, exactly. You know, the there's word lot, Trinity is in the Bible, are, but we know that the Trinity is real. It's a concept. Yeah, it, 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 we understand it. Yep. Yeah, man. Like So, yeah, bro, like now we're pastoring. On fire, a bunch of on. I mean, you've seen it. A bunch of a bunch of young people mm -hmm. filled with the Holy Ghost, casting out demons in the streets, healing the sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're winning souls, but it's like at least minimum a hundred people every service, mm -hmm. um, in person and online combined, giving their life to Christ. Bro, revival's breaking out. So it's just it, we had to go through a lot of spiritual warfare, um, coming out of uh, the voodoo, New Age, and all that. We went through a lot, bro. Like we actually had like a lot of backlash and retaliation. Yeah. But man, we, it was all train. It was all training. It prepared us for what we're going through now. We had to get delivered from the spirit of rejection and healed, so that we can help the others get delivered and healed. Mm -hmm. Like it's like it's understanding, bro. Mm -hmm. If you don't overcome it, you can't understand to help someone else. We were just talking about that earlier, like 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 just the love. It's just love, grace, like yeah. bro. Like when you realize how messed up you are, mm -hmm. you're just like, bro, I'm straight. Like I ain't pointing fingers no more. Like. The only thing I'm pointing is up to Jesus. Like, Amen. You know what I'm saying? So Amen. like now we're on fire, man, and we're um, we're over in Apopka, Florida. Um, I'm pretty sure that my brother's gonna post my YouTube link in the um the video description. Oh yeah, go check him out, man. Go this check guy it out. is lit. Yeah, man. I love his videos. I don't watch many people's content because I low key I don't know, I've watched a lot of content. I've been in the game for over a decade, so I'm like, Oh, it's just content. But nah, his content is captivating. You know why? Because the Bible says that the kingdom of God uh, comes in power and not in word and yeah. you really operate in the kingdom power bro and you get to Amen. show people this ain't about dead religion this is about true spirituality which is jesus christ and only come on. jesus Woo, oh, yeah. come on man <laughs> yeah, for the holy ghost on that one so yeah man y'all check it out um just um again um man subscribe to the channel man this yeah. uh, my brother's going to be putting out a lot more um videos that are going to expose a lot yeah. of darkness and also yeah. teach a lot yeah, and um, and just it's, it's gonna be all around just healthy YouTube channel. It's gonna have this kingdom, bro. Yeah, I believe there's gonna be a lot of stuff on here that the Lord's gonna use in different seasons, and yeah, it's gonna blow up, bro. It's gonna, you know, thank you, man. It, I receive that in Jesus' name. Actually, for those who don't know, the reason why I started a new channel is because Pastor Rich was in prayer and he said the Lord spoke to me. Yep, and told me to tell you to make a new channel, and I'm like, bro, when you told me that, I'm like, Ugh. and look how look how it's going now. It's blowing up already. Quick, I'm about to. I mean. Like, I was just at, a couple days ago, like, almost 9K. And I just made this less than two weeks ago. That's crazy. With 9K subscribers. Almost 9K, bro. I'll probably be over that by the time this video is posted. Because, bro, I'm gaining, like, hundreds every day. Yeah. 
You're on the road to 100K. Dude, amen. Very I soon. received that in Jesus' Very soon. Name. You're going to get another, another silver plaque. Bro, let's go, <laughs> dude. Because you know what? I was checking uh, my analytics, and I was looking at like how much I was gaining per day, and I'm like, bro, this is exactly how it looked like before I blew up in the yeah. world. So I'm like, God, like, cause bro, God is so faithful. Oh, you guys gonna, you, man, he's gonna use it for his glory. It's like you already have the, um, the gift, the mantle. Like you already have the, uh, you knew it in the world. Yeah. The, the authority. You now I get you, to use it for Jesus, bro. So gonna, much better. So many people are gonna be saved. Yeah. Some are gonna come out of dead religions. They're gonna come out of like false religions, because bro, like you have a passion and a drive for true teaching. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that, like, to the point where you gotta like, like, cause you're like, it pisses you off sometimes when you see false teachings. Yeah. But but God has given you that that um that drive yeah because he wants you to teach yeah yeah that's just like me with evangelism bro i used to hate i'm, I'm not gonna name any names but i used to hate the people that would get on microphones and yell at people <laughs> and be like bro you're going to hell like you know like and i'd be like bro why do they and I, bro it would infuriate me mm-hmm. and i and i'd have to i had to repent a lot because i would speak against these men of god that god is truly using but then it led me to actually like you know what i'm going one-on-one yeah god was like if, if you why don't you do it mm-hmm. The minute we started doing the one-on-one, now you see a lot of people doing the same one-on-one style, and and God used it. He used used it as for as a niche, right, for His yeah. glory. A lot yeah. of people are doing it now, blowing up too yeah. with the one-on-one road mics, like, and it's good, bro. It's all for the glory of God, anyway. Mm-hmm. It's not about me. It's yeah. not about like, oh, He did it first. No, bro, it ain't about that at all, bro. Yeah. It's about it's it's actually about spreading it. If yeah. someone if someone's watching me. And 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 does and goes out there and does it because they see my videos. Glory be to God. Yeah, amen. Good. Go do it. Right. More more people go do it. Right. Because it didn't like this is all from him anyway. Yeah. All for his glory. He wants more evangelists out mm-hmm. there. He wants more teachers. He wants more apostles, prophets, like pastors. He wants he wants that. Yeah. So right now it's, we're in a, we're in a revival period where if you're with it, if you're like God, I want to do it. He gonna get you right. And yep. if right now for the person that's like, man, why am I not being exalted? I'm trying and it's not working. It's because you're going through a process. Yeah. You have to be processed before you can be exalted. Right. And if you're fixated on the exaltation, you're not going to be exalted. Until you let it go. You have to let it go. The minute you say, God, I'm letting it go and I just want to see what it, where, am I, where, where can I work on myself? Yeah. That's when God will break you, put you through some trials, shake you up a little bit, get you right, and then say, now go. And then when, when you do start getting exalted, it becomes, like you said, very smooth. 10K in, in, in a few weeks, 100K in a few months. Like It's, it's going to yeah. be smooth because God's hand is on it. You know why God has exalted the ministry that I've been doing recently? When I, when I gave up the world and I started making Christian content, for two, this is the first time in two and a half years where I wasn't losing thousands of followers on Instagram every day for posting Christian videos. I'm gaining again. But I would wow. post, bro, you're, I would you're post. Thou- losing, losing thousands? I was losing thousands a day. This is the first time in the past two weeks where I've been gaining over a thousand a day again. He took the Instead channel, of, cleaned it? Yeah. Oh, my but God. This but this is the crazy part, right? When I first came out as a Christian, right, and I started posting videos, I got lit up by the world. Everybody, oh, Big Nick's a misogynist. He's a bigot. Oh, he's a phobe this, phobe that. They called me every phobe prefix you could think of. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they probably called me a water phobe at one point. I don't know, bro. They be using phobe way too much, bro. I ain't afraid of anybody, bro. I fear God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, I was getting persecuted a lot. I lost people I grew up with, man, um, since I was a baby. People, you know, cussing me out that I grew up with, bro. I lost, you know, close relatives of mine. Um, so that rejection was in the mist. The like, rejection was in the mist, bro. Like, I had everything taken from me. I actually had a lot to lose, but I knew I still had Jesus. And I, I knew if I hated my life, I would gain it. You went all out. I went all out. I had to because I was like, this is my destiny. You couldn't play the middle. I couldn't, bro. I can't be a, I can't be on the fence. The devil owns the fence. Ooh. I got to be sold out. Like, I got to burn for Christ to the point where, like, people probably think I'm crazy, which Ugh. I was content with looking that way because I don't care about how I look to man. I care about how I look to God, and I know I'm going to only answer to God on Judgment Day. Come on. I'm not going to answer to men here on earth. They don't. They, they, and they don't really care about you. No one cares, you know, they, they only care about you as long as you can do what they want you to do for them. Like, There's they, no love. They, the, the world, just like, you know, the devil has handlers, like the world has handlers too. Like these handlers only want to be in your life so they can control your thought process. Yeah. If you're not pleasing the handlers, they'll turn on you. Quickly. But I, I didn't care, bro. I was like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going hard for Jesus Christ. And I lost a lot, bro. I lost subs on YouTube. I lost followers on Instagram. I lost a lot of money. Wow. A lot of money. Because you, um, you were making a good amount. I was making bank, bro. I'm not going to disclose how much, but I was making a lot in the world. Wow. Um, especially when I was like in my original come up. And I was willing to leave it all. And I'm like, God, I don't care if I look like a fool. I look like an idiot to the world. I have YouTubers with millions of subscribers blowing up on the algorithm making hate videos on me. I'm like, Lord, I'm wow. willing to look like an idiot in front of the world if it means I can still do what you call me to do. I'm willing to do that. And, you know, there would be times, bro, where, like, I'd be going through so much persecution and so much rejection. And I would hear the Father say, I'm proud of you, son. And, dude, just hearing that audible voice phew, made all of it go away. Dude, just the, just the voice of God made that, that rejection and that suffering go away. I would sit mm. in my car. Getting attacked. And I would pray. I would get attacked. I'd be praying, like, like praying in the spirit, like trying, trying to reach the third heaven. My spirit man reaching the third heaven. Mm. And I would hear God speak, I'm proud of you, son. And I'd be like, man, this is so worth it just to hear that. <laughs> and um, and I was like, bro, I'm never gonna stop. And because I never stopped, even though I look like an idiot in front of everybody, people in my personal life and people in the world, mm. God, as of a month or two ago, started exalting the ministry to levels that I wasn't even getting in the world. Wow! And I'm like, bro, this is this is God is gonna is gonna bless you, but you just got to be obedient. You just got to keep pushing when it looks like there's no hope. Because there always is light at the end of the tunnel. And the light is Jesus Christ. And my God is more than able to supply you whatever that you may need. He will give you your heart's desires as long as you're walking in righteousness. My God is an awesome God he raised. raised. Yeah, bro. So God is faithful, man. Like if you're in the storm, if you're in the struggle, because I've been there, man. I'm officially out of the wilderness. Like we're good in Jesus' name. I'm I'm prophesying that right now. but. I'm officially out of that, bro, but it took a lot. It was a lot of irritation. You in the, you in the fight now? Yep. I'm in the fight now, bro. I'm in the war now. Yeah. I'm out of the training ground. Come on. Me, me and Pastor Rich, we go in a war. We're doing a revival event. He's doing a revival event, and I'm going to be speaking at it. Come on. Which I'm very thankful for, man. I appreciate the cosign. Because I know the power in cosigns, man. Yes. Especially in the world. Yeah. You cosign somebody in the world, it meant something. Wow. And, and you're actually responsible, like, for that cosign. So if you cosign somebody in the world and that person does something shady or weird, yep. you look like a fool. Like a fool. Well, in the body, too, but in the world, that's how it was. It's, it's actually, it's really important in the body, It's too. very important because, because, because a cosign, actually, like, you're responsible for the actions of that person. Because then people start saying, well, he cosigned this person, so right. that means that person must be. So right. it's, it's very, that's, that's why I'm, I'm very careful. Right. Like, so I, I, I'm, I'm very honored, bro, that you chose yeah. to do Two that. Two days, man. Friday and Saturday. Amen. Yeah, it's Amen. It's going to be powerful. A lot of people are going to be touched by your testimony. Amen. And about the fornication and rejection. Yeah. It's going to be good. People, some people are going to be watching this yeah. after the revival's already done. Yeah, amen. So, man, I, I believe that it's just the, be, it's the beginning of many, bro. Yeah, amen. For real. I'm thankful, And I man, believe truly. the Lord is going to win a lot of souls. Yeah. It's, 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 all, it's, all, it's all militant. Yeah. Organization, so. Man, it's an honor, bro, to be able to learn, to be under you spiritually, bro, and to be able to get that cosign because, you know, I, God's given me a lot of revelation. He's given me a lot of knowledge. And I was in the, actually, bro, every time the Lord gives me, like, crazy revelations i'm in the shower mm. i was talking to pastor rich about how it humbled me because pastor rich is my spiritual covering and to you know submit under a wise counsel like him even though analytics wise i may have more followers it's just how the world looks at it right mm-hmm. and i was really marinated on this and i'm and i'm wondering like lord why do you have me doing that and the lord literally spoke to me and he said there the analytics in the kingdom are different Come on. And I had a I had an open vision, bro, of like, you know, like Social Blade on YouTube, how you see like all these analytics and these followers. Yeah. And the Lord gave me like a split open vision for like a couple seconds and showed me like a graph and showed me like a ranking. Because there's ranks in heaven, oh, bro. Oh, 100%. People don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> They'll call you, oh, bro, the Pharisees are going to hate this, bro. They're going to no, hate this, man. the Bible says you, you go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Glory to glory. That's and rank. so the Lord was showing me. He was showing me, although in the natural realm, you may have more followers here, like on social media, in the kingdom, the analytics are different. Yeah, and he's like, you're operating by kingdom principles because his analytics are higher than you in the spirit. Yeah. And I'm like, praise God. Well, that's why. Yeah, so I, a, I caught that revelation, yeah, bro. I have apostles and prophets over me right now, but they have yeah. no followers. Yeah. 
Bro, and they're high-ranking generals. Yeah. Like, like, bro, like they've raised people from the yeah. dead. Like, God has co-signed them in the spirit yeah. realm. Yeah. So it's, it's, but what God is doing right now, bro, is He's actually like He's doing a major thing on digital mm-hmm. on the digital spaces. Mm-hmm. Like He's He's requiring it. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of these apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, they have to get with it or get left. Yeah. Type they of do. deal. Like, and a lot of them will will be used as as like a covering wise counselor, like someone there to help people. But like, bro, like if you want it, like right, right, like you know, fishing, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to catch, mm-hmm. there's new bait. God has released the bait. Yep. It's obvious now. It's the digital spaces. What are you going to do about it? Yep. So he's he's taking people out of the world. He's taking people um, that 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 are in Christ that just caught it and he's bringing it all together. Like let's hit the let's hit it. Mm-hmm. The internet's about to be like, right? Just like just 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 shot up with a whole bunch of revival of Jesus Christ. Bro. Yeah. Amen. So praise God. Well, dude, I'm so thankful that you came on the podcast today. Such an honor, guys. Make sure to go check out Pastor Rich's YouTube channel. I'll put it in the description below. Go support the ministry over there. If you live in right. Apopka, Florida, or in the Orlando area, be sure to check out his church, Hallelujah. Remnant Revival Outreach Center. It's Big Nick Verified. I've been there. It's an amazing uh, congregation. So if you're looking for community, go check it out. Really Thank appreciate you. you guys watching the pod today. We got more videos coming. Yes. Uh, is there anything else you want to say before I close out, Pastor Rich? A quick prayer for them. Let's do it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that watches this to the end, Lord. Even the ones that didn't watch to the end, Lord, that you uh, that you allow, allow the testimony, Lord, that you've given me. You gave me this testimony, Lord, to touch them. To let them know that Luke being lukewarm, Lord, is not is not what you want. You don't want yeah. them hot or you don't want them warm. You want them either hot or cold. Mm-hmm. And Lord, I pray that, that you light everyone up on fire that's watching this right mm-hmm. now, Lord. That your Holy Spirit would fill them, Lord. That they'd be delivered. They would know they don't have to go to the world, the sex, the drugs. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in Christ that we have to be in, Lord. That you're cool. You're not boring. Yeah. Bless them, Lord. Have angels surrounding them in Jesus' mighty name. And me and my brother pray together and we say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, bro. Thanks, guys. Peace, guys.